Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. This week brought to you by Hymns and Movement. <clears throat> I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. James. There you James. go. Hey, what up? It's your boy, Bernie. And I'm Gus. So you see, we're off to a good start. Never you didn't, gonna you didn't, get you didn't, didn't fuck it up. Perfect. Yeah, you nailed it. Let's stop now. Absolutely. Americans are a lot louder than British people, aren't they? By default. Oh, do, do, are, are we lower on the audio board? Also, Gavin. Than the than the Brits. You've forgotten what country we're in. Americans don't say things like that. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're used to it. Don't worry. You got, you got to let us know. Otherwise, we'll we'll you just get out of control. It, dude. Yeah. I I almost saw a fight earlier today. Speaking of being in the United States, <laughs> I was the sales uh, office. No, I was uh, at that stupid roundabout that's down the road on 51st. Oh, no shit. And uh, I w- before you get on the roundabout, there's a light, right? And there's usually panhandlers there, you know, asking for money. Okay, you're going west. Yeah, going you. west. And I'm stopped in the left lane because I'm going to go straight. And um, one, of the, uh, one of the panhandlers gets up to talk to the car in front of me. I'm second at the light. They get up to talk to the car in front of me. I can see the woman in the car in front of me points to her back seat. So the guy, the, the homeless guy... Like goes to the the rear door, opens it up, and there's like a bag. Oh, so he grabs the bag, and the woman's like waving to him. Like I guess it was like a bag of water or food or whatever. Nice supplies. lady, it sounds yeah, like. So super far, nice. So good. I, was, I was like, good on that lady. Like she's uh, she's helping him out. Guy grabs the bag. You know, he's. Starts- I pause. Gavin, yeah, finish the story. What happens? It's a baby seat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear more about that. <laughs> it's a giant well, bag of shit, and he, she's pulling a prank like a lady. Was, yeah, it was like it was trash. No. Okay. okay. He starts walking away to go back to where he was sitting before. Another car that was like the next lane over, the driver puts his car in park and gets out and starts yelling at the homeless guy and walking over. Because I think he assumes that the homeless guy just opened up that woman's door and took her bag. Good Samaritan. So then he's coming out and he starts yelling and he gets like in the face of the homeless guy. And they're like in each other's faces, like screaming at each other. So at this point, it's two people who have done a kindness. Right. And it's, and it's erupting into a fight. Right. And that's what I'm like, welcome to America. What the fuck just happened? Like, this woman just did something really nice. And now there's like, I'm going to watch a fight right in front of me. I was helping him. Well, I'm going to help you. Right. And then this, so like, uh, eventually, like, the woman, like, rolls down her window and, like, you know, I, 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 my windows are up. So I can't hear what she's saying, but she's, like, waving at the guy and, like, gesturing that it's okay. Then, like, the guy, like, turns around to go back in his car. And the homeless guy's still upset. He's, like, screaming at the, <laughs> the other guy who got out of the car. Yeah. Like, you don't end that encounter. Well, when the, you want to. Right, what the, the, fuck, the, what the woman, fuck just happened? The woman's learned a lesson there. No, truly. <laughs> just ignore Never be homeless kind. people. Is that the lesson? Don't get involved. You know sometimes when you're playing a stealth game, and you, you, you're like 20% through, and it's like, yeah, I've done, I've done this really well. And then you just do it, make a mistake, and it all kicks off. Yep. And you just revert to the last checkpoint. That would be a situation where if I could just go back to the checkpoint, I would. and just That, that could play out entirely differently. <laughs> right, like put the bag in the front seat, and you roll the window down, and you <laughs> hand it out. And you present it with flair. Right. <laughs> I never revert to the checkpoint. When everything goes wrong, I just start chucking grenades and like running around shooting everything. Really? I do. That's how every stealth game goes for me. I get all the (laughs) way through up to a certain point, somebody sees me, and I'm like, fuck it. Shotgun comes out. So when you're playing Horizon, you played that, right? Yeah. Did you, were you in the bushes for like 10 seconds, and then when it all kicks off, you just guns blazing? There's a lot of parts of Horizon where you gotta go a pretty long distance, and you gotta kill the, I can't, it's been a while since I played it. What are the snake robots? What are they? The like the weasel looking ones? Snake they look like raptors. Weasel robots? They look like ra- the watches? The raptors? Yeah, watches. watches. That's it. <laughs> the weasel <laughs> rat raptor robots. There you go. That's right. it. It's, that's in the lore of Horizon. So those, you gotta like go and you gotta track them over and then you gotta stay after a while. You're just like, fuck it. And you get out and you just shoot them in the eye. You're good. All the same. Far Cry 5 is like that too. Yeah, Far Cry 5 is different. I, I love, I love using the bow. So what? In that game. How does this lend itself to the story? You just shoot. Well, the, he, I don't shoot know what, the guy in the eye. Yeah, no, no, I guess no, so. no he's talking I would have got in my weasel. car and shot the guy oh, in the, the eye. But we were talking about the homeless fella. We we're reloading saves, we're approaching it differently. Oh right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, just stealth games in general. It's just like some people just don't have what it takes for stealth. What if you, you like have that ability and you don't, don't know it because you've learned all your lessons as you've gone along? Like you have a perfect run through, a perfect playthrough so far. I really, yeah, I really like stealth games and trial and error games. That's why I like Splint Cell and Hitman. Because you can you can go in there like, and then you you perfect it. See, I've like, oh, I've never oh, been oh, into Metal good. Gear Solid because of that game where you're just in a box for four days. <laughs> you're just in a cardboard box, just walking around. That's the beginning of like I think it's the second one, Metal Gear Solid Two or something like that. And with you, scenes. I can't stand it. And ever since then, I've just been like, no. Well, yeah, then, you, then you get an hour I've and never, a half cutscene between them. I've never got through a Metal Gear game. I watched Dan play Metal Gear Solid Four, I think once. It's a good one. You're missing out. I think picture. Metal Gear Solid Four. I think. Ends with like a two and a half hour. That was uh, that was it. I think I told that story because it was like, all right, Dan, he's right at the end. We knew he's right at the end. He's like, we'll finish this up. We'll go to the pub, and it's like 
nine thirty. By the time we finished watching that cutscene, it's like almost midnight. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that last cutscene like, in Metal Gear Solid Four is fucking yeah, long. Like, well, that was a Friday night down the toilet. It's like that's longer <laughs> than a film. <laughs> yeah, the, the conclusion of the and game. It, it makes less sense than a film. Yeah. You got you got to be steeped in the lore. Yeah, I wasn't. That's how I uh, felt when we were in line for Ready Player One at South by, and Ashley wanted to wait in line, and it was a two and a half hour line waiting to get in the movie. The hour, the movie's what, an hour and a half? Two hours twenty minutes. Is it? Yeah. Okay. We saw it last night. That. What's that? Didn't we? Yeah, we did, didn't we? Watch the movie. What is your opinion I, of Ready saw, Player One? I saw it last night too. I've got no opinion of it. There you go. <laughs> right. I didn't know. I came out. out and I was like, I don't. I didn't. Didn't hate it, and I was, I was just like, I don't know whether I liked that or not. I don't know what I just you watched. You have a gut feeling. It's just like I felt good. No, and there was too many things distracting me. <laughs> that might be well, the most British thing I think I've ever heard. Well, no, there was just people from like British sitcoms back home. Yeah. That were, it was very. I'm not sure if this is the case. It seemed very obviously shot entirely in England. Like it looked like England. Everyone in it was English, pretending to be American. I just yeah, there was like oh, Finchie from not the at office. All. No. I didn't get that at all. Yeah. It I mean, I like, get why you would. It was it not shot in England? All the, I'm looking all at the it. exterior shots all look like they're in Hackney in East yeah. London. Or and then, Shoreditch or something. Uh, Birmingham? Birmingham. And like half the main Birmingham, cast was English. Well, most Midlands. Of it. And That's all of our media. Ropemaker Street in London. <laughs> you two Rope should not be complaining Street. about this. This is opportunity for you all. Mm. All of our best TV gets basically stolen now from the UK. And all of our best actors are all... Because when you British think, people or think about it, Simon Pegg, uh, Simon Pegg, the other bloke who was, what was his name? Mark someone? Mark, Nick Frost? Uh, Mark no. Ryland? Yeah. Also English. Yeah. Uh, both playing Americans. The girl the, in it is English. She's from Manchester or something. Finchy from The Office. And uh, black, black, black guy, guy from, from Extras. From extras. <laughs> <laughs> we were just having like, oh, it's that guy from that second. Oh, it's that guy. <laughs> yeah, it's just shitloads of English. You going to claim the Iron Giant while you're at it? Oh, no. could do, can we? Is, oh, uh, is uh, Tracer from Overwatch is what British? There you go. There you go. Too much Tracer in Red Player there's One. A lot, there's a Literally, lot of my only complaint is that if they're going to cover so much territory, including potentially future IP that we don't recognize, like the main characters could be these incredibly popular future IP things that they've used for their avatars. Way too much Tracer. Yeah. Way too much modern day. Tracer like, was like kept coming back to it in five or six different scenes. Yeah, and no, the DeLoreans did a ton, but. It, Makes sense. DeLorean yeah, because the, the, the DeLorean has already stood the test of time. Right. It, Back to the place. Future will always be culturally referenced. Yeah. Recent games that have come out now, you just don't don't know, do you? Don't know I just, yeah, you don't know if it's going to last as long there's as There's no DeLorean. PUBG. What's that? No PUBG. No Fortnite. <laughs> PUBG. What well, the, PUBG? The, they have the like a, a, a pan on their back. The Loyalty Center headset was kind of PUBG-ish. Oh, yeah, it looked a little like little a bit kind of like a level three helmet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought it was fine. Um, I thought it was okay. I, d I didn't regret going to watch it. It was fun. I didn't regret it at all. But it was nice. I just don't know whether I liked it or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you walk, you walk down, you're like, I don't know. Was that good? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for the food and the beer. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I, I remember that I didn't get Dan anything. Oh, because he sat on his own. Yeah. <laughs> oh. is, is Dan in town? Poor old Dan. Yeah. He took my seat, didn't he? At the, at the Meg, movie. Meg yeah. got me a last minute. Yeah, it was originally going to be Meg, me, and, and Dan. And Dan said, uh, you can sit next to Gavin. I've been hanging around with him all week, and I'm sick of him. Yeah, sick of his face, <laughs> sick of his attitude. But they said that they were doing this thing on the on the screen where it said, you know, if, if someone's annoying you, then you can write it on your little ticket. Yeah, it's nice. And I just went to Gavin, should we get Dan thrown out? <laughs> <laughs> that would be fantastic. Because, you know, he put up a fight the moment they came to talk to him. And he would start talking back to them and confuse them, and then he would have been ejected. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he definitely like you can't he'd, he'd, appeal that process, can you? They're just like get out. I know, and also that's not the forum to sort of have an argument. And yeah, state, like, like by yeah, argument, I, I mean like I said a state your case. Yeah, <laughs> I also like the fact that I'm just envisioning that he's all the way across the movie theater for you, and no, these two guys are complaining about this guy really far away, and everyone around him is like, "No, he's fine." It's like, well, those two guys <laughs> over there said he's causing a yeah, problem. Yeah, they? Did, do the Alamo staff grass you up when you've made a complaint? Do they like say like? Do they what? They grass on you. I think that's up to the grass on particular. You. I think it has to be done all in code. Do they it? snitch if, on you? Because if it's someone right well, next yeah, to you, because the idea of writing it down on that piece of paper to for them to collect is, I think, for anonymity. Is it? Yeah, yeah. So you, you can, so you can, so what? A good one, a good waiter or whatever would go. Oh, okay. Yes, I'll get that for you now, sir. <laughs> 
then give it two minutes. And then come back and say, oh, there's been a complaint. Right. Yeah. As, as opposed to just pulling out and going, hey, you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or just the end of the paper. It's like really quiet, taking everyone's eyes. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Hot dog, yeah. You what? You. <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, do you think anybody different. who raises like a complaint card, does anybody like complain and order food on the same card? It's like, hey, the guy <laughs> two seats over is really loud. Well, also, can I get a hot dog? Yeah, oh, and I, by the way. I would, <laughs> I would to cover me so that I can go, so that if they, if they aren't ejected for whatever reason, I can, you can just go, look, by the way, that wasn't me. Look, I've got the hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> just I, uh, shrug. I don't want it. I Do watch, you want it? <laughs> <laughs> this is just to kick someone out. I watched Buckley put his order down, because if at the, at the Alamo, you write it down and you stick it in the front of the thing. He he wrote beer. <laughs> just put it in the front. <laughs> beer? But then yeah. I changed it. Oh, and then it. he was like, no, no, no. Beer or cider, and then put it back. It's the easiest customer ever. Yeah, but they, it's not because they don't want to get you, and they had to be like, "What I do you knew, want?" I knew it would be a discussion. Yeah, you want you wanted to engage in a discussion. No, I didn't. I just knew it was gonna. That I was gonna have to say, "What well, beer is nice?" Oh, you just wanted you know to ask I mean? her, like a recommendation. So, and they gave it to me. How was it? It was all right. Cider. Fair play. They recommended the cider. Yeah. All right. Bold move. I uh, I saw. A uh, family walk in when I was watching Ready Player One. I also went to the Alamo. Oh, and, families uh, are the worst. It was, uh, I guess. I can't like, believe you're seeing it so soon after it came out. What I felt like I had to see it because we were talking about it on the okay. podcast. It was like uh, the parents and then two daughters. And the daughters were younger. They're probably like uh, 12 or 13. The family walks in and I'm, I'm kind of close to the aisle. So I hear them when they walk in. The father looks at the girls and goes, Okay, uh, we're not sitting together. You, you're uh, the fourth seat down over there. And you, you're like on the other end on that aisle over there. And the girls are just looking at him. He goes, Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and they keep walking to their seats, and they're both just go, Dad, that's not funny. I love this dad. <laughs> it's like, he's that's great. the most dad joke ever well, as possible. But also, he's missed a trick. Because my kids are six and four, two boys. But mm -hmm. As soon as they're sort of that 10, 11, and we go to the pictures together or whatever, I, I will get them separate seats. Smart move. Yeah. I'll, then, I'll but, sit with my wife and enjoy a film. But at the Alamo, there's, there's sometimes like just booths of two. So then you're basically... Having your kid go on a date with some random stranger who's there He's on his own. He's got two kids. Put also, it's like, then, yeah, how well, are they going to pay? I'll, right? I'll have them sat together. Oh, okay. How are they going to pay for it? Like, then it becomes a thing. Like, do you give them a credit card? To, they like, got to learn up? somehow. <laughs> they could get, a way to learn. They could get a job. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if legally they could have gotten a job yet. They might have been a little young for that. So, are we allowed to talk about moments from the film, or is it too soon? Uh, I can't remember any moment from the film. <laughs> Here's <laughs> you. Do you remember uh, no. Richie from The Office? Finchie. Finchie. Finchie, there you go. Yeah, Finchie was in it. Finchie, you know, uh, in the American office, David Keckner, whatever his name is, that character, yes. Todd. Yeah, Todd Packard. It's the British equivalent of that character is in Ready Player One. Yeah, you can talk about it. I think as long as you don't spoil anything. I thought the Shining bit was cool. I thought it was cool. Oh, yeah, that was So good. If, it's the one thing that if you don't understand the reference, I think you would get lost in that moment. But it's absolutely brilliant. It was weird. It was the weird... Just to see this, like some of it looked like old footage. It looked really they, cool. It looked amazing. I was like, damn, um, that's really. It looked really. I don't know amazing. where the cuts are. I don't know what's new. I don't yeah, know what's that, old. That stuff was impressive. Yeah. The film was very different from the book. That's what makes it. I think it. they kept the title and the character names, and that and the were, basic premise. Well, and VR, right? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it was just of the Oasis. And, every, uh, everything was incredibly different. Yeah, but the author the was contest and everything. The yeah. author was on the screenplay, though, wasn't he? Yeah, I'm not complaining, yeah. but it's just it was. I, I was expecting there he, to be. He wasn't more complaining similarity. either. You know, for a fact that he's just going. Spielberg wants to send yeah. the book into a film, and he was polishing his DeLorean. All right, go ahead. You want, to change, you want to change everything from the book? Yeah, okay. What director would you want to be in a movie for the most? Having been in actual real famous movies and that. I don't know. I don't really listen to them that much. They tell me all kinds of stuff to do. It goes, it goes right over my head. <laughs> what about like? So do you do you do you ever work closely with the director, or is it more just like I'll take care of it, just tell me where to stand, or are you like working on your character? And yeah, stuff? no, I don't. Okay. Do that. <laughs> no, there's some some directors are they work through the camera lens, you know, the eyepiece. Yeah, most, and there's some that are actor directors. Yeah, and they sit down and talk with you. I never know what you're doing. Yeah. I don't think I've worked with any director like that. Really, I've only worked with directors that have a shot list and. Know where you, they want you to stand. No one says like, "Oh, maybe you should try doing it like this." Or so nobody it's respects just... you as an artist. You're just no, no, no. Like, no I, get, I, get, I get total respect. So how yeah. how many times on the in betweeners were you told to like adjust your performance? <laughs> there was one time uh, where Ian Morris, who was one of the writers and one of the co-directors of the second movie, but this was way early 
in when we were doing the, the TV show, his note was, can you do that again, but better? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Good note. It's George Lucas School of Directing right there. So I was like, oh, thanks, mate. <laughs> it's a bit shit. I don't know why, but you're definitely the cause. Yeah. Fix it. I, I've had that note before, but I, 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 <laughs> I, I definitely deserve it. <laughs> there was one time where we just needed a close-up of my hand ringing a doorbell. But did I you was pop the middle finger in. Did you no, do some jokes? I was looking at the monitor, <laughs> and and missed the doorbell. <laughs> it was really like just a really quick shot. But what do you need the monitor for if you're using your human eyes? I don't know. Right it's like these monitors here just get distracted by them. When you see yourself on a monitor, <laughs> you want to look at it. Yeah, <laughs> like a budget. It'd be great if the film if it was shot back when everybody shot on film, because then you could actually be able to calculate how much money it costs you to oh. miss that doorbell. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we used to calculate when we were uh, shooting our first movies on 60 millimeter film every second We held down the record button to hold it down uh, Was five dollars a second well, and what... you waste the first second or two spinning it up you do you? yeah, it's garbage And then you have a, a limited amount of film on the reel So you have enough where you don't have enough to do a shot so you have to let it go and it's like shit But you still have to get it developed and everything else Pain the us. And yeah, horrible. it's really weird to, to like shoot something and say all right We'll see what that looks like in about three weeks because we don't have any any idea oh, whatsoever. Sure. Yeah, you can't do any rushes or anything. No, we didn't have like yeah. a video tap. You couldn't afford that stuff. So, so. Ready Player One only made forty one million dollars this weekend. What do you mean weekend. only? It's forty one million dollars. Give low. me give me forty one million dollars. It's the first. It's not the first weekend it's been out though, is it? It's been out. Yeah. Yeah. This it? is opening weekend. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was I at the know. film festival here. And uh, yeah, this is the opening weekend. I think that's why I thought it was old because I've just been I've been watching this podcast. Yeah. You guys have been talking about it for weeks. It's been going on for a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The uh, I, I just like I, I got fascinated by the amount of gatekeeping that people were doing, where they were they were trying to dislike this movie before they even went into it. Like yeah. they were convinced it was going to be terrible. They yeah, they wanted so it to much do badly. That. It's like this is a movie for all of you. You know. Yeah. yeah like I, I went, uh, Esther went into the film really not knowing anything about it, mm -hmm. and uh, we watched it. We walked out, and she goes, "It was fine." Totally fine. Why, she's like, why? Why do people not like? Why are people bitching about this online? Like, it's fine. She was like, oh, I, I want to read the bad in the bad reviews to see what the fuck are people complaining about. I certainly can't think of anything to criticize it. I, I can't think of a single thing. It was sort of fun, and it was fine. Yeah, it's there's fun. people who think yeah. that the number of references to other IP, like the Iron Giant. Which also there Back wasn't as many as I thought there was going to be. Well, the, the fact that the screen is like loaded with them in some of the big scenes. Yeah, but there wasn't... It people wasn't. see it as pandering. But to What's me, it's like, if, if, you go in a, if you go into a VR environment today, all you see are IP. Yeah, yeah. You, go to, you go to VR chat, right. it's just that. It's just it's like exactly that. It's exactly like, that's exactly what it looks like. But if anything, also, it's two on the nose. I hate that argument of like, oh, you're just trying to please an audience. What's wrong with trying to please an audience? Right, yeah. I'm making a movie for them. And if somebody's making a movie for you and you can t tell it's geared towards you, why wouldn't you want to support that so that more people make more movies along yeah. the lines of what you like? Also, I think people don't understand like what a... In terms of paperwork and legal, what a technical nightmare that must have been to get all those IPs in the same to movie. To be fair, like, I think 75% of it was all Amblin, Spielberg stuff. We signed well, a release for Halo Ruby. stuff in there as well. Like, I talked about it on the note, we signed a release for Ruby. Was and it in? Specific, I have no clue. I didn't, I didn't see her or the Crescent Rose. We signed, signed one uh, specifically for, for her and for her weapon. So, I, I don't know. Yeah. I noticed there was no, no Nintendo stuff. Good. I'm not no, surprised not, at all. No. Yeah. Which it seems, seems like a, like a like error. Like if that was the case, like that's yeah. a, a big hole. Like also that would have been Sega huge. as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. And what would there be besides Sonic? Uh, Street Fighter. No, sorry, that's Nintendo. No. Uh, Streets of Rage. Sorry. Stuff like that. Would that be noticed? Would people know about that? I wouldn't. You wouldn't know. <laughs> There's a lot of battle <laughs> battle toads I saw a few times. No shit, really. Yeah. I saw He Man. I didn't see. See, we're doing we're doing this man. thing. We're doing the thing that everyone would be upset about. That we just saw this or saw that. Let us know if you saw Ruby <laughs> in the chat. We're monitoring the chat on well, the people website. Have, people have been looking, and I don't, I don't. We don't think she made it in, or if she did, she's in the back of some scene somewhere, or maybe just somebody has the crescent rose somewhere. But that would be easily mistaken for a scythe. A scythe. Yeah, I would think. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Also, I found it difficult to appreciate because it's like what I was saying to you. It's just sort of, I just find it too difficult to get excited about stuff that's so computer generated. Yeah, like your issue is that most of the movies 
in CG. Which is fine, which, is, you know, I should have but, accepted that. <clears throat> but that, then I asked, like, do you like animated movies Toy less Story. than live action? Actually, probably, yeah. So do I. I mean, in if if you we want to talk about my top five movies, there's not a single animated movie that would get into that. So, yes. What, what, what's what, crazy what, is a very classic live action movie, like The Shining, they were able to recreate well, that was incredible. That like, that bit was amazing. Incredibly high visual fidelity for something that I, I feel like I know that space really well, and they were able to replicate it. I was yeah. like, I felt like I was back in it. That's yeah. a little scary. If like I feel if that if any of that was reconstructed, really, like if they built a set or if they went to a location that was from The Shining and recreated it, exactly. that would have been so cool to walk yeah. into as an actor. Mm -hmm. that, like, that's impressive if yeah. that was the case. But I don't know whether it, even what we were looking at then was just computer generated. That's why it's, it's it, just, it leaves me just feeling sort of slightly I feel like a lot of the time when they were in VR, in the Oasis, everything looked CG, but that shining part, when they're like lying on the carpet, it, the it, carpet looked like it was real. It's, it's probably like, like carpet. an artistic choice, right? Like the Oasis is supposed to be yeah. crazy video gamey, but then they leave to these other places that they can create that look like the real world. Yeah. It was, it was wild. I, I thought, uh, but I agree, I think I thought the beginning of the movie was a little too heavy on the computer generated stuff. I, I, that would be my one thing. I yeah. wish there was a little more. What is the world uh, at the yeah. top of the film? It's like immediately you're like in the in the oasis. Did at one point she pull out a Gears of War Lancer? Yes, and yes. it got like and it immediately broke. Yeah, I, I was I was like, was that a Lancer? And then it was gone. I was like, ah, oh, that would have been cool to see. Is that the gun <laughs> with the sort chainsaw, of chainsaw yeah. thing on it? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I know. So. Safest gun in the world. The I will say this gun. though: is like the part I didn't like it was at the beginning when he's in the stacks and he's climbing down. And they're trying to establish how many people in the world use the Oasis. And it just goes to show that even Steven Spielberg can't make people using VR look cool. It always just looks dopey. <laughs> Was he trying to make him look cooler? <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, it's like, it doesn't matter how you present that. It always looks awful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the, the thing. It, the, the, yeah, because yeah, the, the movie's set in the future, but it was still sort of the technology that we have now. Yeah. And it's, that's all and, right. and, it, and, that, and yeah. VR is... Just a pain in the ass. Like, I, like ass. I've, I, I've got VR. I've got, I've got all the gear, but I just never use it because mm -hmm. you just start like getting it out. Well, yeah, a bit of that. Yeah, you have to set it all up and everything, and it, it, there's wires all over the place. The and... wires would get to me. Yeah, I feel like has anyone tripods for the lighthouses. I don't know why you can't just part. mount them like. Security cameras. Yeah, but in my house, I'm gonna yeah. put up those things. Get the fuck out of here. What's what wrong you mean, with you? I have a I, bunch of tripods in the corners. I, I yeah, do. Because you can put them away when people come over. I know. Well, you're but never gonna put them away. Also, it's they're away right now. You're, gonna, you're, you're gonna put them away, but then you never bring yeah, them out to use them. them. It's too. When, yeah. when it's are you too early out? in the technology to commit to drilling holes in the wall and stuff. You know, right there, right there. That's the voice of reason. I drilled holes in my wall. I did. Okay, what is the connection to the lighthouse? What is that you plug in? It looks like a mini stereo cable. No, it's it's a power cord. Well, I'm talking about the ones to link them together. So why not just have a magnet like link them together. with the wire behind the wall, and then you just plop them on? Oh, you don't link your- you don't have enough- uh, if you magnet? have too far of a distance, you have to link them. Uh, okay. Sorry, I don't have- I don't have a- <laughs> What? A, a riffraff tiny space. I know, you've got your thing. Dude, fuck you, first of all. Thank you. <laughs> one day you'll get on my level, don't worry. Yeah, yours is set up because it's part of your office, dude. I'm talking about my one at home. Really? Yeah. You have yours with like a fucking, cable running across fucking your Fucking world space? class. I wanna, mine's, I, mine's I wanna a picture what the fuck are you doing stuff. in there? What are you playing? That you're running around a space VR chat. Are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Garbage. Well, I've done that a few times. Um, so it was our anniversary. 15 years of Rooster Teeth. No, that meant me and you. Yeah. yeah it is <laughs> you and me. It's a very special time for us. What is the 15th anniversary? What are you, what are you supposed to get someone? Like, if you've been married for 15 years. It, is, it, is, that it, is there a bug? It, it escalates <laughs> slowly. It, it's really slow. Rooster it's going to be something really unimpressive. Has a brand new site. It'll be something Straight like a real com. aged cheese. <laughs> Going for it. Gab, something what do you got? Like that. James is in with the aged cheese. What do you got? To represent 15 years? Yes. Uh, naughty movies. Naughty movies. Because if, if, if you're 15, you can watch South Park. <laughs> I'm going to say. <laughs> I fail to see any logic. There. Some, I'm going to say it's something dumb like tin. We look this up. Because I remember now looking it up and looking at it, what was surprising about it. So the 15th anniversary traditional gift is crystal, something made of crystal. Uh, Not too shabby. Sense. That's okay. The crystal anniversary. Made it a decade and a half. You get that? I think naughty movie anniversary is better. The I agree with you. The modern gift is a watch. So, Gus, you can give me a watch if you'd like. We'll be talking about that soon. But uh, then this is really interesting. The gemstone and the flower for the 15th anniversary are the ruby and the rose. No is, way. Yeah, isn't that fascinating? Holy shit. Yeah. 
That's I love that stuff just for like last year was year of the rooster. Yeah. And now it's the year with the ruby rose. Well, we were actually looking to the year of the rooster. We were looking forward to that for a long time. Like we kept every uh, time the Chinese zodiac calendar rolled over, like, is this year of the rooster? It's like, no, it's not. This, not this. <laughs> it's like three years from now. So. What year, Chinese year, were you born? Rat, I think. Dragon. Are you really? That's, a good dragon. that's pretty I think, good. I think I'm a horse. I think. Were you slug or no something? No idea. <laughs> <Slug>. <laughs> uh, I was, what am I, a year after you? I'm yeah. Like, no, you're before me. You're before you. Oh, yeah. uh, I should also <laughs> mention, since it was our 15th anniversary, there is also a 15% off Founders Favorites at the Rich Teeth store. Uh, celebrating 15 years of Rich Teeth, a super sale on merch that's meticulously handpicked by myself, Matt, Jeff, Bernie, and also myself. Uh, and each founder is manning the at RT store Twitter uh, for the week because why not? It's high quality merch. High quality. Because th this shirt is... Almost 15 years old. <laughs> also, um, I need some shirts. I'll sort you out. Well, I can get I've you got, a good deal. I've got the no clothes. 15% off issue. Founders no Select. Clothes. Load you up. Would you just come to the US with nothing? Yeah, it's a smart way to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you have to wear it in a movie. I always feel like when you travel internationally. Oh, well, that's my. Is that the same shirt? Yeah, I'm wearing it right now. I wore it then, I'll wear it now. Oh my god. <laughs> I was, I was, uh... That was in 05? Gosh, you held up well, before. dude. Why haven't Thank you grown you. into your head yet? Yeah. Well, it, was, it wasn't ready for me yet. <laughs> Wait, do you think his body's too small for his head, or his head's too small? His head's tiny, Yeah, it? you look like, uh, someone said you look like a shrunken head. You do, yeah. A, a witch doctor got hold of you. So wait, I hadn't grown into my head yet, but it was too small. Wait, y your head yeah. hadn't grown into so I, you. So my body your hadn't head, yeah. caught up with, no. No, I said it wrong. You were right. Yeah, I don't. Either way, it's the same either shirt, way, I'm wearing you, it right this you, second. Either way, you looked weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I still a little bit do. No, you don't. Look here. No. You look like uh, you could... I reckon if you walked around America and said, oh, I'm loosely related to the royal family. I think you people... Think I'd get some? Yeah, I think... No, I'm not saying I'm getting some. Oh. <laughs> I just think people would believe you. Oh. I think, I think any all, American uh, would believe anybody with a British accent. I don't think they'd believe me. I, I think they would. <laughs> I think they would. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. are you royally? Can you do? <laughs> oh, look, look at look that! At, look at that creepy technology. In split screen. Oh, wait, how do I do the face? But look over this way a little bit. Look towards me a little bit. There you go. Turn your head a little bit towards me. There you go. Now look straight ahead though. Well, With you your eyes. Oh, your yeah. eyes. Move your I eyes. I can't do well, it. You, uh, why? Why? What can't? Why can't you replicate the thing that you? Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's the mirrored. Screen. It's in reverse. I, I'm doing adjustments and I'm going the other way. Good you just point. can't stop looking at the monitor. That's your problem. Good point. Well, yeah. And then I was looking at your finger, and you were like straight, and I was like, what? Your finger? And you're like, no. Say, so look over here. It's not that hard. I know. Yeah. If you... All right. I'm looking over there. <laughs> right. It's too late now. And now point your eyes towards the camera. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you had to... So by straight, you meant at the camera. Yeah. What do you think straight is when you're on the fucking set? Okay. Look at my finger. Look straight. It's, what, you look it's at me? Body posture. It's where your shoulders are centered on. But why'd you look at me? Because I turned more to the right. Okay. It's technically I was right clear here. clear and I said your eyes. I was clear. Yeah. You I, said my eyes. I clarified. Straight. Hey, Gab, do it again, but better. How okay. about that? Just I learned that from a very popular shit. director. It's always a good note. Oh, yeah. It really builds your confidence up as well. Yeah. That was the and, other thing. and what happens is, is you do do it better, <laughs> or you crumble and cry. Right. <laughs> that was the other thing that got me about the uh, Ready Player One stuff. Is people the the, the pre hate before it came out is people. I feel like we're in a weird time right now, right? Where Steven Spielberg has had this very prolific career and is only making a couple of films before he retires, and people are going to think that he's going to fail at making a film at this point in his career. He's, Ver failed, he's failed at making films. I know, but I mean, it's like, it's gonna, there's gonna be a point in the future where he's not gonna be with us anymore. And we'll be like, can you believe we were alive at a time when we could go to the theater and watch a brand new Spielberg film that was gonna be premiering? Yeah, oh, that's, yeah. that's my favorite part about last night. I was like, I'm watching a new Spielberg. Right. Yeah. This is crazy. And it was a very Spielberg movie. Jurassic, yeah. Jurassic Park is my favorite film, by the way. Do you know he made Jurassic Park and Schindler's List in the same year? How is, is that fucking possible? That's, that's insanity. How is Imagine that possible? Imagine if he got mixed up a little bit. <laughs> that would have been a really, that, like, if, or if some of the reels got interchanged, <laughs> that would be really weird. You saw the T-Rex. Yeah, the computer-generated Oscar <laughs> Schindler was really weird. Yeah. John Hammond's list. Was it? Was the guy in Simon Jurassic Park? Hammond. I know yeah. That, yeah. When the uh, when the Raptors got out, and then Ray Fiennes showed up, that got really dark, <laughs> super fast, super fast. Man, Ray Fiennes' performance in Schindler's List is fucking amazing. It's terrifying. That whole scene where he's. Talking to himself in the mirror, it's just like, it's, it's terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Variety headline about Ready Player One today literally said exactly what you're saying, Gus. It said that 
uh, Ready Player One proves that Spielberg can still deliver a blockbuster. It's like he, he's not proving anything to anybody, right, dude. Right. Oh this no, he guy's, doesn't. He yeah. invented the blockbuster. Yeah, that's what he did. Jaws was exactly summer blockbusters yeah. because of Steven Spielberg. People mm-hmm. queued around the blocks for for that film. He invented the blockbuster. What? He doesn't have to prove anything. No. no. Why is it assumed that you get worse the more you do? I don't think you do. I think you just. Sometimes you do like, something really good, sometimes like, not so good, but you just carry on because of this industry and you love working in it. And yeah, I mean, he's had some stinkers for sure, but yeah, but he's still amazing. He's still Spielberg. Even his stinkers, like what? What is? What are you classing as his stinkers? Didn't he do the fourth Indiana Jones movie? Did he? But still, didn't he? Like, imagine that film just on its own. It's yeah, not, like it's still just so uh, people would go, "Oh, that's a fine film." Would they? Would you want him to direct a Star know. Wars movie? Yeah. I feel like J.J. Abrams is like the spiritual successor to Steven Spielberg and George Lucas somehow. Spielberg did do Crystal Skull, and yeah, I, c- I could see that he's um, he's done some some good work, and I think he's done a good variety of work too that I've that I've enjoyed in different ways, like going from Super Eight to like a Star Wars kind of film. Mm-hmm. I think uh, that shows some uh, uh, quite a bit of depth, but. You've been a fan of J.J. Abrams for a long time. You like yeah, Lost. Not, not as long as you. You like you, Alias. You yeah. I can go back all the way to Felicity. But he does, things start really well, and then you wonder where the hell are they going after a while, yeah. you know? it's a, TV sucks for that because it just kind of meander for a bit. But I think people are now there with Cloverfield, the franchise. Yeah. Like, where the fuck is this thing headed? What am, what am, what am I in this for at this point? For entertainment and yeah. fun. I'm rewatching Lost right now. I don't think. Are I've, you really? Why? I don't think <laughs> I've watched it since it went off the air. And uh, I'm enjoying it so far. Okay, fair play. What year did Lost start? Oh, four. So it's like the same time that picture was taken. Oh, yeah. When Lost started. Lost season one would have been on the air. That's crazy. Was it only oh four? Because I feel like we talked about it nonstop in the first year of the podcast. When did we start the podcast? We started the podcast. It was still on, though. It was on for like seven years, wasn't it? Yeah, they went oh four to ten. Six years? Six years, yeah. So if if we started the podcast five years in, it must have been the end of the year. Because we would have started as soon as we showed up at Congress, and that's not the case. Yeah, we just we just went over all this for the we RT 15th the, anniversary. There, there also, the writer strike may have interrupted when we would have been talking about it as well. Eh. Well, we can go back and see the date of the podcast when it started. Right. Yeah. yeah. Sure the first podcast was December 08. It was it was we started it to like did a podcast to promote launching Achievement Hunter is what we did. That's why that's why it started. But then it didn't, then start, we didn't release those. It, it didn't start full time until like May 09. We didn't release those. <laughs> You just that's, really that's why, like, Achievement Hunter started in July, and we didn't start the podcast until December. Then we did the big bet, though. When we, the bet was one of the first things we did. Was that anything to do with Achievement Hunter? Yeah, because it was the gamer score for Jeff. I mean, he right. wasn't directly saying Achievement Hunter, but it was to promote the fact that Jeff was going to get 10,000 gamer score in... And it wasn't the first podcast? Didn't we do the Call of Duty one that Jeff and I were competing I, about? I don't remember. That would have been... I mean, I know all I remember is the first one was December. I don't all remember right. if the Call of Duty one yeah. was, was during that or not. All there right. was a big gap between the first one and the... Next ones. Yeah. yeah. I think it didn't become weekly until May. And then I don't think we've missed a week since May of 09, since we went to the weekly format. It's like this inevitable thing that you can't escape from. Every week, you have to sit down and talk. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, no. We've been chronicling our lives for almost a decade now. I was thinking that. I was, I was thinking, I, th- I like that I've been on these podcasts for so many years because I can look back and like see what I was up to in those years. And in my head, that's cool. I'm, I'm never going to do it. I'm never going to listen to these. You like, might yeah, do. I? No. You might do, mate. When I'm 40? And when I'm 50? 20, 40? <laughs> when you're 20, not. 40? No, in 20, 40. Yeah. Maybe. But I don't think I'll have access to them. Why not? Might be hard to find. Nah. I have files that I can't. In there, mate. Video files I can't watch because I don't have the codec anymore. DivX? Uh, Cinepack. Oh. Remember that codec? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> look at your face. Yeah, I, I, was, I went through a codec nightmare with us in the early days. Yeah, we had codecs that were hardware locked. You needed to have specific video cards that in your computer cannabis. in order to watch it. Or there was also the Matrox one, where you could buy a USB dongle and you could not view these video files unless you had the video card or a three hundred dollar USB dongle plugged what? into your computer. Mm-hmm. It's like, what kind of fucking bullshit is this? I feel like even the term codec isn't used anymore. Like, do, yeah. do people using YouTube even know what a codec is? H.264 is a codec, though. Do you yeah, know the, what codec stands for? I, I Code do. decoding. Yeah. Yeah, but I think, like, people won't even know what the word is anymore. Oh, yeah. I thought it was compression, decompression. Is it compression, decompression? No, I think it's codec, code, decode? Well, modem is modulation, demodulation. Yeah. 
<laughs> it is. It's no, okay, you're, yeah, compression makes more sense than coding. But, but yeah, yeah, that would make sense. Compression, decompression. Totally makes sense. Code, codec is coder, decoder. No, you got it, you're right. Fuck, I was right. I should have stuck with my guns there. I'm never right over Gavin anymore. And now that was that was I, it. That was, I had it. And I lost. I wasn't. It. I wasn't. That doesn't count. That, that doesn't count. I don't blame him. He's he's right so frequently. It's, <laughs> the same thing happens to me also. Uh, here, let me read this. Uh, I want to remind everyone: this episode of Receive Podcast is brought to you by Hims. Check this out: sixty-six percent of men start losing their hair by the age of thirty-five. That's two out of every three dudes on Earth, and that's a lot of people. Two out of every three. Sixty-six percent. Two out of three. If you have this problem, check out 4 a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. In case you ever wondered where you get sexual healing they talk about in that Marvin Gaye song, there you go. Uh, Hims provides medical-grade solutions, real doctors who offer quality generic equivalents to name-brand prescriptions to help you keep your hair where it belongs. There's no waiting room, no doctor visit. Save time and your hair by going to 4 Answer a few quick questions, and doctors will review and prescribe a solution for you. Uh, I like to test most of the sponsors that we have on the on the podcast, so I went and I, I tested it out. It was a very smooth, painless process. Talk to me about this. What's, tell me about it. I'll talk to you after I finish reading the copy. Okay. Then we'll go a little more All into right. it. That was a great uh, So order now. Our <laughs> listeners get a trial month of everything you need to keep your hair for just $5 today. Right now, while supplies last, you can see the website for full details. This will cost you hundreds if you went to a doctor or a pharmacy. It's so easy to use Hims. We promise these are not snake oil pills or gas station supplements. Hims prescription solutions are backed by real science and are and the products are shipped directly to your door. So thank you, Hims, for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. So obviously I don't have a problem with uh, hair loss. So I decided to try uh, uh, some of the sexual wellness pills that they sell. I don't remember the name of the pill. Go ahead. Sildenafil? Let me what, what, is it, what does it do? It is, gives, gives you a love on. Yes. How'd, you, how'd that work? Works fine. Yeah? Yeah. I was always curious. Did you notice a difference? Yes. You did? I did. All right. Fair a play. difference from a normal love is on. A, Sildenafil. Yes. A libido difference? No. Or a performance difference? Uh, perform A responsive difference. Does that matter? Does that make sense? Yes. Did yes. it change your distance? No. I don't believe so. You were more turgid. Yes. <laughs> I feel like I'm being, I'm like on a quiz show, like I'm being- Hey, you're the I'm one being, doing the experiment, we're just trying to get the research out so of I, 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 I did the, I did the research. So you're gonna continue to use this on a regular basis then? Uh, I just wanted to see what the website was like. Okay. I, I don't, I don't feel like it's something that I need, but I feel like, you know, with turning 40, it's like, that's where like, you're, the people start to wonder about those kinds of things. Okay. About well-being. So last time James was here, he pooed a lot in my toilet. <laughs> what a segue. But- the oh, dicks, <laughs> ass. That was how I did that. Okay. Um, how's your ass this time? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was in trouble last night. <laughs> I went to the barbecue, and uh, from about two o'clock to five o'clock in the morning this morning, uh, it was honestly it was mostly water, just coming <laughs> right out. La barbecue is not a sponsor of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, every so every time you say, come yeah, in, yeah, I know, yeah. I don't well, know. Well, at least last time it wasn't war. Last time you were able to pile there was up. Some, yeah, <laughs> there was some. Uh, so for three hours, you did honestly, have to yeah, because I could, I and it was three hours of like, oh, okay, that's the end of that. Now I can go back to sleep. And then it was like, oh no. But the thing is, I I think it, you just don't eat enough during the day. You have I know you, well, you booze I know. on an empty stomach, and yeah. then you put barbecue on it, and then booze. I just have one meal a day. That's all I have. That's a smart move. I think you should have some bananas or something to really like stop you up a little bit better. Do bananas stop you up? Yeah, they do. I didn't know that. Don't they? No, I don't know. I think any kind of fruit. I, I just, I've got, I no, just eat not cherries. I just eat runs. meat or potatoes. Mm. You like jack potatoes. I'm not gonna, is, is this a common thing with you? Do you get sick frequently? No, not, no, it's just b the both times I've come to Austin, I've ended up spending most of it on the toilet. <laughs> Should we be worried here on the podcast? I've said that to Gavin yeah. before we started. If I get through this podcast without shitting myself, I'll consider it a success. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the bar that you... I set. So you, you... Can I read the text you sent me this morning about the no, description? That, no, no, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> let that be. Your goal for the like. day is to go 90 minutes without taking a shit? Pretty much, yeah. It's important to have goals. <laughs> and I'm doing all right. I'm, doing, I'm getting there. You seem I, to be a, you ever, right, you ever take anything though. to like try to stop it up? Like the, I, I'm always weirded out by some of that medicine. I got something like, you can take, like Imodium, I, right? I, like it just stops your guts from working. Back home, I eat loads of curry, loads of vindaloo, and stuff like that, and I feel Solid like British what's food? vindaloo. Yeah. It's, it's a Indian really, food. really hot curry. All right, I'm not eating that. It's one down from a fowl. Fowl's the hottest. You got vindaloo, Madras. 
No more curry. Vindaloo is awesome. So I good. know that. We, we have pH. mild, hot, and then what they call Indian hot. That's right. the way they describe it. You, your Indian hot would probably be like a medium. Oh, fuck off. Not lying. Really? Yeah. And you can stomach all that. Yeah. But la barbecue. Uh, yeah. It's just high fat content. Maybe that's what it is, yeah. It greases you up. It does. It Good gets Lord. me all loosey goosey. <laughs> 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 so I have, uh, I don't know what, the, I don't remember what the name of it is, but we Thanks, got Kevin. three medications <laughs> for the Amazing Race, and I kept all of them because they're hard to get medications. One was an anti malaria drug, one was a very wide spectrum antibiotic, and then the other was this anti diarrheal medication. And they were tiny little pills, the anti diarrheal thing. They say, if you get in trouble, so, like, you're in a foreign country, drink some water, and you have intense diarrhea, take one of these. If it's still bad, take two, but just know if you take two, you pretty much paralyze your guts for, like, five days. Oh, mm. God. Like, it just shuts everything down. How does it do that? I don't know. I don't know. But I've kept them, like, in the back of my drawer. <laughs> I had to keep these things. So Most of that prevent... stuff is a, is a variant of, expired. of opiates. I, oh, yeah. You like, heroin and opiates, they slow down your digestive system. So uh, most of the time we take something like that, like an emodium or whatever that pill was, it's probably an opiate of some kind that doesn't get you high. Instead, it just has the side effect where it shuts down your digestive system. So it's like but, heroin without the fun part. Right. When right. I've read that some people who are really desperate for a high will take like hundreds of emodium pills because like they have a tiny bit right. amount of what makes them high. God. But if they take like 300 pills, then oh they my, get high off of it. Right. That. Don't, yeah. obviously do yeah. not do that. This is something that like, oh, so I'm pretty sure there are people heroin, heroin that are just collapsing and shitting themselves. Yeah. That seems like a thing that goes hand in hand. Well, that's seen in train spotting, right? When he's coming down from heroin. Yeah, then he has to run to the, the toilet. Suppository. Yeah, it's an awful scene. It's a dirty movie, that one. Did it? you watch Train Spotting too? Anybody see I it? didn't, no. I, have not. I didn't either. I love, I love Train Spotting. I love Train Spotting, yeah. yeah. I feel like I just kind of, the second one came out, I just kind of missed it. Me too. Probably out too late, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> the sort so, of Train Spotting bandwagon had left, left the station. <laughs> yeah. Getting a few messages on Twitter, people telling me that I was born in the year of the ox. I'm uh, born in January, so that is before the lunar calendar rolls over. So I was born in the year of the rat, which is the previous year on our Wait, calendar. What do you mean the lunar calendar? But I was at the, well, you know the, Chinese and, New Year is different. In, right, so oh, it's, it's in it's February. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So okay. appreciate the information, but um, you are racist. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I had a. I, I'm. I'm, I'm Getting tired of arguing with people online. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so futile. Don't like, play Sea of Thieves with randoms. I uh, I got into, oh God, of course, I got into an argument with this guy the other day. <laughs> I, I I retweeted this Newsweek article that talked about how more children have been killed by guns in the United States since Sandy Hook than military service members in all of our conflicts since 9-11. And uh, someone replied to me like, that is 100% wrong. You need to learn to do some research. Don't just blindly accept facts. There's no way the number's higher than this. So I go through the article and I copy and paste the exact like where the research comes from, why the numbers are correct, and send it back to him. And then no reply. Yeah. It's like the dude who tells me to research <laughs> and to double check my facts ignores the facts that I just sent to him. Like, And I see, I know he's read it. Because he's made other tweets since then. <laughs> I'm like, then I, I keep... you spending too much time on that. I keep going back to his time. fucking profile and looking, and he's there's no you. acknowledgement. Why, why rise to it? I, I know. don't... It's just like, he has the audacity to tell me <laughs> to fucking research and check my facts, and his facts are wrong. I sent him. Uh, I showed him. you got to gotta rise above it. I've That's been rising that. above it for, for years. That, that would be my advice <laughs> to Trump. Rise above it. Rise oh above God! It. Who's, why is he keep? Why is no one saying stop replying to these people and stop saying this stuff on Twitter? Everyone's saying that you're the president, right? So just ha just rise above it a little bit. Just you know, we used to say president was the most powerful position in the free world. I don't know that that's the case anymore. So what would that be? Who's got that job now? In the world? Yeah. They, they, you've heard that before, right? President's mm -hmm. the most powerful. Yeah. Well, lead, the lead, lead of the free world, yeah. Yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> so sure the, American exceptionalism. It's either I think they Putin still... or the president of China at this point. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Who now does not have term limits. Correct. He just, that just changed. They just revoked term limits. So he's basically... It's really clever, that. Dictator. Yeah, it's, it's really funny. good. It's a good way to get reelected. It's yeah. to limit Because that's what I would do. If I got voted in, mm -hmm. you know, through democracy, I'd go... Oh, by the way, we're scrapping all that. Yeah. yeah let's forget about all that. <laughs> I'll, I'll just stay. I was charged. the last one in. It was yeah. all just led up to me, and yeah. then we're done. <laughs> you, you promise you'll do a good job. 
I will do the best job that I can do. Yeah. And if you don't, then the voters can just say, do it again, but better. Or, you know, get over it because there's no more voting. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys have one of the longest standing leaders in the free world by far, Queen Elizabeth. Mm. I don't know if she's an active part of the government, but she's obviously a leader. I think, I think technically she forms the uh, government. Yeah, I think tokenistically she uh, she has to uh, be involved. Yeah, so like she 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 has a her, her minutes or whatever it is the the sort of meeting with the with the prime minister every week. I don't know what they're talking about because she's awesome. She's a gift to the world. I love her. I, I saw some photo just... of her firing a, a like a mounted machine gun today from when she was in the army. No, just like uh, they were showing her a demo and she like walked over to me and just started fucking firing. Really? <laughs> yeah, is that real? It's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I can look. I can look it up. I can look it up. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, the Queen inspects an SA-80 assault rifle. <laughs> Is that what it was <laughs> from November 2016? Oh, all right. Can see that. Uh, I'm. I'm trying to see if I can. I don't it think up. you should do that today. That might not be. Uh... That's from ages ago. Yeah, look, that's yeah. a long. Yeah, that's from like yeah, the that's, 70s. That's, that's yeah. photo. So it's so badass that she's doing that. Yeah. I don't know. It's cool. I just think it'd be kind of crazy if she did it now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It might stop her heart. Well. Yeah. What you saying? Like it's about time? No, no, <laughs> no, 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 not at all. But so, will Charles become king at that point? We don't know, really. He would be, right? You don't, uh, you don't he, like the royal family that much. No, I think they're great. I Why think, don't you like the royal family? Are you comfortable uh, talking about this? Yeah, of course. I think it's uh, and and uh, whenever I talk about this, when I'm in America, someone sends me some video from YouTube that an American made saying. Oh, you, the the royal family actually makes you guys money. Does it? It's not the case. It's really not the case at all. They're doing okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're doing fine out of being the royal family, and they, you know, they do cost us money. I promise you. And um, I just don't like, uh, you know, they get they they don't have any inheritance tax and things like that, and they will just be rich forever. And uh, it By keeps. Birth. That's right. Yeah, it it just keeps it keeps the status quo. It really does keep the class system in it back home, and uh, it's getting worse and worse. And the divide is getting worse and worse. The richer are getting richer, and the poorer are just having a terrible time. And uh, the queen sort of represents that. The royal family they they keep all that tradition, and it's like, I mean, I, I feel like I'm in the country where I should be able to say this sort of thing because you guys fought a great big massive war because you were going well hang on why do we keep giving this family money that, aren't, that don't do anything I just don't like the idea of someone being great by birth not by marriage yeah it shouldn't it shouldn't that shouldn't be the case at all it should be you know equal for everybody everyone deserves the same start the same sort of Aspirations in life, and mm -hmm. I, mean, I know what, that's not what, the case. What if there was a lottery to be the royal family, and like when the current monarch <laughs> dies, isn't a there lottery already? You, you for, don't everyone, we all enter that at birth, basically. For, for everyone in the UK can buy, gets one ticket. <laughs> if your name gets drawn out of the big hat, then you get to move into Buckingham Palace. I know, but it's just you, know, <laughs> you imagine opening that letter. They'll change the plans. So many, you've got so many people living on the streets and stuff. Yeah. They've just got land just sitting there, yep. just making their money. Mm -hmm. but and that, that, that's what's in this YouTube video as well. They go, oh, the, the, the royal family actually surrendered some land over the government to pay off a debt. And uh, but th I believe me, they've got so much land. It's like a tiny bit of their land. Like the entire crown estate is. Is bloody massive. Yeah, it? and they and all they do is make money from the country that they don't pay any tax to live in. That like it's just it's. I it, thought it's they corrupt. voluntarily right. paid tax. You having a laugh, and you? No, 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 no. Up... It's 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 there. It's all there. The system is all there to keep them rich, to keep them making more money, and to 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 keep the, <clears throat> this thing going forever and ever and ever until people go. So if let's, have, uh, let's stop all this. Nonsense. So suddenly, Historically, that does not go very well for royal families when people finally decide. Well, say to it happens. Things. Say it was like, all right, royal, royal family's done. We don't have one anymore. Um, what Buckingham they, Palace and museum. What do? But like, what would Turn we it have? Turn into a hotel. What, Turn you, what, would you hotel? Have? what would we have? Is like, oh, that's the cool English thing that we're going to go. Oh check right, out. I know that's the thing. Is well, just London, eh? What, like the whole chips? thing. Yeah, fish, whatever. Well, you now have a higher murder rate than NYC. But talk about you text me that but, yeah. you know people people always say that oh what about tourism they bring so many tourists and I'm like oh Paris no one's going to Paris are they yeah right exactly <laughs> no you're exactly right people go to see 
the you know Buckingham Palace because they're in London. They don't, I don't. I never went to Nobody London. Nobody makes the trip specifically yeah. for that. Yeah. yeah, I have to get. I have to lay my eyes on Buckingham Palace, which by the way will still be there. You yeah, know? of course we will. Turn it into a hotel. Well, don't you want to get knighted one day? You can make more money that Absolutely way, right? Absolutely not. No way. Just move Parliament. You, in you make a lot more money that way. You turn it. Turn Buckingham Palace into a hotel. That's it. Charge a little ex, little extra bunch. What we have to do the Corgi Suite. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I, I I really do identify with this because when you look at say Trump, for instance. He's the president of the United States was elected into that office and he owns all this stuff, right? Yeah. He owns all these things and then can direct <clears throat> government funds towards it or trips or something like that or put people mm -hmm. in resorts. And that feels gross when you read about it. Well, I mean, it's just, you gross. know, the fellow that was uh, in charge before Obama and uh, he had financial interests in munitions and oil. And he did all that stuff that he did. How about George W.? Yeah. Yeah. And you sort of think, oh, is there a conflict of interest here? Yeah. Dick this... Cheney, I don't know if you know who Dick Cheney was, but yeah. he's the worst. Like the one of the, I don't know what his position was, one of his board of directors for Halliburton mm -hmm. or former executive at Halliburton. And then they became the number one contractor uh, during the Gulf War. It's yeah, just well, like, that's uh, awful. Like George Bush was, on the board, uh, was involved in like security and stuff, mm -hmm. for, you know, home security and things like that. And you just think, well, you're creating all this work for yourself, all this money. And the crazy thing is, you know what I just read recently? Like in this, like, it, it's like we live in this, like this information, like gaslighting spiral now. I just read, Gus, that people on the right feel that CNN led us into the Gulf War by misleading people about weapons of mass destruction. Mm. And my recollection from that was not at all. It was I thought it was the CIA. Colin Powell yeah, and, and we were and, being told that there yeah, were weapons of mass standing up in front of Congress and pointing at this stuff and everything. And it's like, I oh, remember, no, it was, I remember it, Condoleezza Rice. A yeah, lot it was all CNN. Time. Yeah, yeah, it was all CNN. And I was like, really? Is no, that? I don't. We, we yeah. were there as well. Tony Blair was telling us, you know, we got we got rid. There's weapons there. Mm -hmm. There is weapons. So, yeah, they're there. They're there. But, also, but, but, but I, I don't know how much to blame him. Like, did he get lied to by our side? Like, where did where where did oh, that he's, misinformation come from? He's got from? some blood on his hands. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> he left. Uh, you know, hopefully one day he'll have to stand up and answer for what he's done. About a couple of beers. <laughs> <laughs> Just but but it, it, it's really weird. You know, how do you find someone who can run a country without any type of potential personal conflict. So you take money out of it. You take money out of politics. Yeah. But I mean like... Because the, pe the person that wins the presidential election in this country is the person that spends the most money on their campaign. True. That's Sadly, been... it's just the person who gets the most people to show up and vote because so few people vote in this country. But it's always, what, what, what's your choice? What You know, mm -hmm. and then Trump gets in. And I think most people voted for Trump because they were like, well, definitely don't want... Hillary, so, but Trump's obviously never going to become president. That's insane. But I'll vote for him to go, well, I voted for Trump. That's how desperate I was. And then he, Same with Brexit. Yeah, I was going to say the yeah. exact same thing. Yeah, that's what we heard about Brexit and it, as well. And, and then it happens. It happens. Go, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, now you got to follow People just it. want change. People are not happy with this, uh, with the system that we've got now. And if there is an option for something to be different, they'll go, well, what's the worst that can happen? Do you I'll think go for something different. In the last thousand years, the world has got fairer or less fair. Well, I think it's exactly years. the same. Yeah, from like people just killing people in the street and being like, Ugh, whatever. People are still being killed in the street, but it's, I think it's exactly the same. When it comes to those sort of social, I feel like there's more platforms now churches, where people can kick off about something. I, th I think there's, there's, there's probably there's the internet. I think there was probably more disparity a thousand years ago because I'm sure back then you had a much smaller group controlling the money, and oh, it was yeah. a much larger group who you know, just work land that they didn't own. And surely, yeah. in the past, any form of protest, you could just send out a bunch of people just to beat them all to death and then just come back inside, and it would be like, oh, no, well, I no guess, complaints yeah, now. Yeah, I guess so. I mean... Can't really do that now. Black people were slaves and stuff like that. And I'm trying to see if... Can't I can do find... it in the countries we live in. Right. I mean, there are countries in the world where <laughs> that happens, and then, yeah, they disappear. Uh, or they yeah. get bombed or gassed. Do you know... What is that? I'm trying to find stuff that happened in the year 1018. That's... By the a way, lot of stuff uh, I'm yeah. not familiar with. Yeah, this is an article the... from February 6, 2003, ironically on CNN.com. Uh, U.S. Secretary of State Colin Powell used electronic intercepts, satellite photographs, and other intelligence sources Wednesday in an effort to convince skeptical members of the U.N. Security Council that Iraq is actively working to deceive U.N. weapons inspectors. God, just reading that just brings back all those memories. Mm -hmm. You know, for when we started Red versus Blue, um, 
it's so funny. It's like lost to time now. But that was February 6, 2003. We started Reverse Blue April 1st of 2003. We were actually worried that the it was inappropriate to have a war-based comedy show because the war started, I think, six days before Red vs. Blue debuted. And we thought that people were going to think we were making a commentary on the war. Hmm. And in America, especially post-9-11, that would have well, been— that was it as well. 9-11 gets bad sort news. of glazed over a little bit mm -hmm. because it's sort of like, oh, I thought you were just going after the guy— that did that terrorist attack. You know, go, you, oh, by all means, go after him and try him or whatever. But it, would, it would just got convoluted. Kind this of... thing is like, oh, but we also have to go to Iraq. It kind of grew. Do, do, yeah. you, do, you, do you have to go to Iraq? <laughs> yeah. Gotta go to Iraq now. Do you know what stuff <laughs> Book Fast Abbey is? No. no. Okay, I guess it's some church in the UK. It was founded in 1018. Oh, okay. So that was a th that's been there a thousand years. It's the biggest thing that happened that year. Probably. Yes, uh, that's the only <laughs> thing that I could possibly say we could relate to, unless you know that uh, the leader of the remaining Bulgarian resistance is <laughs> Ivots is treacherously blinded and captured by Strategos, someone from the Byzantine Empire. Sounds like a fan fiction. Who was the, who was the first person who decided that that history should be written down? Like some, someone at some point has been like, I think it was you God. Know what? It was God, wasn't it? Well, God obviously invented books yeah. so that people could do it. But yeah, someone at some point must have been like, we need stuff recorded long beyond my life. I think I'll start doing it. It probably would have been like songs, right? Because like that's the way people would have told stories. Because people, uh, most people weren't literate. I think history is just accidentally discovered, isn't it? What do you mean accidentally discovered? Someone finds a diary somewhere. I don't well, think anyone why, goes. Why write a diary? Oh, because it's just a personal thing. I don't think anyone goes. So you think the first piece of history was a diary? I'm not saying it was the. It was, well, it's obviously cave paintings and things like that. Do you think there's someone who's literally recording current history? Like that's a person's job, Gav. Like they're sitting down and is. going, "I'm writing our current history." Well, no, because we have like archives now. Every, that everything's, take care of it. everything's documented, but they don't go, "Oh, we should document this in case." Like what? Well, like no one thinks that far ahead. Yeah, no but one... someone this, like you can see what the weather was like on a day in like 1904. I know, but can you? It. Well, yeah, because someone wrote it down. Yeah. But... The span of recorded history is roughly 5,000 years, beginning with Sumerian cuneiform script, the oldest discovered form of coherent writing from the proletariat period around the 30th century BC. 30th century BC. Yes. 30th so, century. 3000 BC. Wow. That goes back farther than I thought. Well, he said 5,000 years ago. Yeah? Okay. Now, now the, you say the math works out. Thanks. Zero, <laughs> yep, it's it same, all checks it's out. Seem to check out. Yeah, five, yeah but uh, five I, plus two. I read five, five, century. Five, two. Yeah. <laughs> We have an enormous amount of Babylonian scripts, I believe, too. Manuscripts that are in Sanskrit. And we've only translated like 2% of them because nobody cares because there's too many. Well, for, it, it's like boring. It's like stuff that has no relevance. It's, it's like, probably like somebody trading a goat or something or, or like, like that. Or like that yeah. one that came out a few years ago. Like somebody complained about the quality of copper that yeah. they bought. It's like, okay. What if, they, what if we're missing something really good right. in there? Well, like it, uh, invented cancer, cured it. Invented uh, cancer. Think, how to, how to contact the would, aliens. I think someone would put that on the top well, of the Well, how would they know if they haven't translated it yet? How would they know about it? I think they'd keep that around, that sort of knowledge. What if it I just got lost it, to Sanskrit? It got lost. It got lost. <laughs> Oh, do you remember that c cure for cancer we had? Oh, I lost God, it. Did someone write that? It's it's so inconvenient. It's another language now. We gotta know, break out uh... the book. Gotta go to Google <laughs> Translate. Be like, uh. Can you a question? What? I'm gonna change subjects here. How come when I'm on my mobile phone and I'm on my web browser and I go to websites, they constantly bug me to get their app? So like, get get the app, get the app, get the app. Finally. After probably a few months of going to one website, I'm like, all right, fine. You know what? I'll get the app. Then I get the app. Then the problem flips on me. The problem flips because then I can't ever get back to my web browser from the fucking app. Every app has built in like a fake version. Oh, and it just of flings you to the app. Oh, yeah. Or it's just, it's just like they put you in a fake version of the website and then nothing looks right. You know, or a fake version of a web browser. Nothing looks right. And it also then, if you go to something else, a link from there, it says, like a YouTube video, it plays in that. It's like, I don't want to play it in this. I want to play it in the YouTube app. And if you would have just sent this thing to my browser, it would have sent me to the fucking app. Right, they're trying to trap you in yeah. their system. It's like this flip problem of like, they bug me all the time when I'm in the browser to get the fucking app. When I'm in the app, I can get out of the fucking app yeah, to get feel, to the browser. I feel like American Airlines does that sometimes where you want to change seats. And if for some reason you got to just look at AmericanAirlines.com through the app. And yep. then you're just in like a dog shit browser that doesn't right. work. It's all clunky. Just send me to the fucking Chrome or whatever I'm using. On I my also don't understand why Safari. there's a button in the browser that says request desktop version. 
because sometimes you can't do something on a mobile version of a, yeah. of a website. That is this fictional. That has never worked for me. If, it's, if you ever got that button to do it, it works anything? sometimes. Yeah, it's like sometimes the the website will override it, and even if you request it, it's like no, you don't get it. What's the point? Yeah, what's the I point? Know. You're right. Like this, Reddit, I finally got the Reddit app, and I'm always like, I have to copy shit and then go to Safari and paste it in there because anytime I click on the link, that's all Reddit is. It's just links to other shit. That's all it is. <laughs> and they had to build their own little little crappy version of a web browser, and it keeps me inside of their app because they don't want me going somewhere else. I fucking hate that. I refuse to use their stupid ass app. I don't blame you, dude. It's Awful. pretty good though. You should try no, it. fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, I got my web browser. I still don't know what Reddit is. Lists. You're a good man. Big, like, You're a good, know. good man. People like, keep talking about Reddit. What people are about today. Don't know what it means. Or Pinterest. Pinterest is. I don't really think I've ever used that. I don't know what any of this is. It's like just like mood board sort of stuff, isn't it? See, this is the type of stuff that will hopefully get lost. This discussion, or you mean like <laughs> no, 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 this, this is gonna, <laughs> five thousand years from now. This gone. is going to be the two percent, and they're going to say, you know what? We don't need to look at any, anything we don't else. Look at the rest of it. <laughs> we got the gist of it. You know, what I NPR was, will be right there. They'll get to us and then stop, and they'll be like, ah. What I always thought was so creepy was Dan's granddad used to go on keep score of his free cell games. He'd like write oh. down his final score. That's yeah, creepy. but that sounds really sweet. He'd obviously played. 15,000 games, so it's the point where it's like notepads just full of yeah. numbers, and it, this is like a serial killer. Oh, he wouldn't even keep it on the computer, he, he would, would write, write it down. It in a notepad. He's oh. Clearly he had a computer if he's playing free seller, yeah. right? but it's like, what are you writing it for? And Why not? What, when are you, you going to go you... and look back at him? And be How like, old was he at that point? 70s. Yeah, so once you get to that age, I think you just do whatever you want, don't you? That being well, yeah. said, but <laughs> one of the most frustrating things in my career at Rooster Teeth is that for the first 10 fucking years, really for the first eight years of this company, we only had one show, basically one show. Is it about backups? Dude, <laughs> no I kept <laughs> backups of everything, Gus. Do you remember that? Oh, Every, yeah. it, everything was organized. It was part of the, the pipeline for yep. production. We had to collect everything, then put on the drives, and then split it on two drives, and keep the drives in different, different locations. Mm -hmm. And then... There were also... Uh... Discs you would burn as well I, I on did. top for redundancy. I did. And so the first part of the documentary is I'm actually trying to go back and find old footage. And Adam is going through and I see the fucking drives because I had a copy at my house of all these stacks of hard drives and a copy at work. And then about, what, five years ago, somebody said, hey, we understand you have copies of the drives at home. You can't have those. Uh, we just need it for security purposes. We got to have those in the office. And the, the tech guys. And I was like, well, okay. I go, this is some of the old RVB why production say, stuff. Why'd you say okay? I, just because I was like, oh, I can get these out of my house. You'll take care of them. Okay. Literally three months later, we needed them. Couldn't find them. They were gone immediately. As soon as I turned them in, they disappeared. And the first part of the doc, I literally said, when we're screening it, we get to this part where Adam Ellis is going through and looking through bins and he's finding these old hard drives. And he goes, he goes, I don't know. They never really kept records of anything. Uh, I guess Gus did all these back backups. And I went. Go fuck yourself. I said that loud in, in the meeting. I was like so furious. It was about not it. me. I never took credit for that. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know why. And Adam I, else goes, I, oh, I guess Gus it. did this. And I was like, you fuck son of a bitch. I remember seeing your hard drive stacks at work. Yep. You had everything. Everything. I had it all. That I, would, get, that would I gave it to Brandon. He was like, eh. people, people was, on, in the chat, I think uh, on the website, Mr. Good was asking, why would you keep it in two separate locations? And it was fire. a case of like fire, yeah, fire. or yeah, of course. something happened yeah. to one of the locations. You know, they, 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 I just read this on Reddit in their crappy version of their web browser. This story that they don't know who invented the fire hydrant because the paper patent records were destroyed in a fire. <laughs> 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 it's like that episode of The Simpsons where like uh, their hall of records, they couldn't look up when they last had a hurricane because their hall of records was blown away. <laughs> it's like, that's a straight out of like a Simpsons, but uh, Simpsons style joke. The, the answer to that is I think you carry with you when you have previous jobs. You carry those things forward with you to your next job. And the guy we used to work for at the call center, additionally, he had a secure storage facility for data tapes and records for like lawyers and doctors and stuff like that. And so I learned a lot about data archiving and the security of things from that. Just seemed like normal procedure to me to have mm -hmm. a double backup. Yeah, he had worked in the telecom industry for a long time and the telecom industry is very good about redundancy and fail safes and, you know, backup plans. Sure, what's happening at Facebook? Yeah. You, so, little piece of advice for anybody out there: if you ever get a crisis and you ever work anywhere, some people's first reaction is to delete emails. Never fucking do that. Never. And they will. Lawyers will tell you that if there's ever a crisis, showing up saying nobody delete emails. 
Because you can see the old recent until you demo. And if you, if, yeah, if you, if you, if you, they show that people are deleting conversations, then they're like, oh, the other, the other team's like, well, there you go, right there. And apparently, Facebook has been caught now. They're deleting internal conversations about things, and somehow this has come to light. Maybe somebody inside of Facebook let people know about it. That's a huge fucking red flag. Mm -hmm. Huge red flag. Don't ever, don't ever do that. They have a lot of fucked up things going on over there right now. Yeah, they do. Um, I mean, there was a, at first it was the Cambridge Analytica thing. And then there was the story that Ars Technica broke, which I talked about the other week, where someone discovered that if you had Facebook installed on your Android phone, that it was logging your text messages and your phone calls. <laughs> Facebook so came out and denied it. And then Ars Technica was like, well, here's the proof. And then Facebook said, oh, yeah, we were doing that. It's Sorry. Like, what? <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> and did, no, they didn't apologize. They said, oh, no, the, the users agree to that. It's in the terms of service. Good Lord. <laughs> so did, do we know if, like, Mark Zuckerberg wanted that to be done? Did he want to track people's texts and calls? I'm sure they're just gathering more data. So then I, 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 I used to warn you and Barbara all the time about putting so much information online. I used to warn you guys about that. And you were I put no more on than you do. Now. What, yeah. what did I have on there? Like, you, you mean by pictures and stuff? Like personal stuff, yeah. Like, I, yeah, I was on Facebook. I've uh yeah I've I've pretty much I'm 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 in the process of getting rid of all my shit on Facebook and I uh, you know I have like an official Gus Facebook page and I post it on there like hey I'm uh, I'm just gonna get my Twitter account I'm not gonna be updating this anymore I'm actually probably gonna delete it and there were a lot of people who got really mad at me saying like uh if I don't have anything to hide I shouldn't care if Facebook's going through my stuff <laughs> I was like what no, that's nope. another point what at is all. this argument that's, that is the worst I hate that as well because it's just you know. That's that's the beginning of the end mm -hmm. <laughs> when when countries start going, you know Oh, we're gonna stop and search if you know just because we can and then if you go well I've got nothing to hide. It's not about that. It's not about that at all You you need to have your right to privacy your right as a human being mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if you've got anything to hide or you don't have anything to hide these people don't have the right I, I just thought it, it was a, a, a shitty move on their part on Facebook's part to be Doing that, it's like, and I choose not to it's like participate the, in the It's platform. like the terrorism act. It's yeah, like they, they, you know, they they they're allowed to just arrest you and and detain you if they just go, well, we think he's a terrorist. But it's, they shouldn't be like that. You've got rights. You're people. Mm -hmm. You're human so, beings. Let me ask you this, James Buckley, star of TV and film. How do you feel about CCTV cameras that are in use all over the UK? Uh. In what in what context? Just that, what? like all the streets are monitored. There's just way more there than there are here. We don't we don't really have that here. Yeah, yeah. We well, have traffic cameras, which is fucking lame. It is, is you know it's very it is Orwellian, and it is uh, you know I do I do think there is a difference between just being just a seat a, a CCTV camera walking down the street to it's public some, space. Yeah, to somebody. Yeah, I feel to like go through my personal um, correspondence and things yeah, like that. Yeah, there's a difference because it's in public. Like, I, I, I certainly wouldn't want CCTV in my bedroom, you know. But if it, if it's out in the street where I am and someone could attack me, I'd be, I'd right. be glad of CCTV. Yeah, your that bedroom, is, that's that, for Amazon. But that is, that is <laughs> that's the rights to that. It is sort of the same thing. You get to a point where you go, oh, you know what? I will put a microchip in my child to, so I know where it is right. at all times. I, I saw and that episode of Black Mirror. So I got that. that an episode of Black Mirror. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, I actually had a moment like that as a parent where, um, and I'll never do this again. I, I signed up my kids as kids account, and it's hard to graduate someone from a kids account to an adult account, like even on Xbox or a Microsoft account. And on Windows 10, my youngest kid is uh, now 13, but it was like back when he was 10, I signed him up as a kid account based on my account. And then without me, it must have been a default option, without me selecting it or going out and looking for it, Suddenly, at the end of the week on a Sunday, it says, hey, here's everything your kid did this week mm. I'm on the computer. And I'm like, I don't want this. I mean, he's 10, so it's like he's a little bit under the age of when I think he should have total privacy. But I was like, I didn't I didn't ask to have this report on my kid telling me what they're doing, you know. And also, it's like it's logging it somewhere, you know, that somebody yeah. else can read that as well. I got really just kind of grossed out by that, even though he's only 10 years old. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's it's sort of vulgar, isn't it? It's just a little bit. Yeah, yep. it's not in good taste. It's, it's just quite funny that there was all people were so worried back when technology was getting big that they were going to track everyone. And they were going to put devices on people, and then everyone just buys their own devices. <laughs> no. Yeah, and so it's like funny. I think Facebook was working on a smart speaker to compete with like the Apple HomePod and the Alexa, <laughs> and they had to like put it on hold. They're like, "Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> we'll we'll wait on that on releasing that device." Who was doing this? Facebook. Oh yeah, good luck with that. No I way. I mean, for a while, the only reason I was using Facebook 
uh, was just to talk to my old friends in England. It was like the only contact I had with them. That's why I had it. Um, yeah, let me read this th other thing here. No. I want to remind everyone, this episode of Receive Podcast is also brought to you by Movement. What a great gift for your 15th anniversary. A watch. As we talked about a little earlier. Uh, the guys at Movement don't just make great watches. They also make awesome sunglasses and just released a ton of fresh new styles for spring. So get ready for those sunny days ahead with Movement's brand new looks. Uh, I just actually was looking through and I saw the Hyde sunglasses really st stuck out to me. They're sleek, stylish, and uh, they look like they're pretty light. And with RTX coming up this summer, you know that I'll be sporting sunglasses as I'm walking from venue to venue uh, to meet all of you wonderful people who come down and visit us. Uh, in the past, uh, you know, I've shelled out money for sunglasses that, you know, maybe don't look as good or fall apart. And uh, our friends at Movement had the same type of experience, apparently, so they decided to make quality, trendy sunglasses at a fair price. Uh, they aren't plastic, they're acetate. You can even get them polarized. The best part is they start at just $70. Movement has many different styles to choose from, both for him and her. You can get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com slash rooster. Uh, you know Movement for how they've revolutionized the watch industry, and now's the time to go check out their sunglasses. Go to mvmt.com slash rooster. Join the Movement. So you can buy a watch or buy sunglasses. I got a great idea. I would tell the sales department if they want movement to sponsor something at this company, they should put a rack of sunglasses right by the door that leads out of here. Oh, yeah. Because it is, you don't realize how your vision adjusts to being in the studio with no natural light. And then you open that door and it's like the surface of the sun. You can't like see that. anything. It's like the opposite of the, uh, the basket of umbrellas that you just take when it's raining. Yeah, you just but grab just for sunglasses. Sunglasses are right there. I forget about how bright it stays late here. So anytime we're done with the podcast on Monday when I walk out, I'm always shocked at how much sun there still is. Can being you get being from Britain, I'm just shocked oh, seeing the sun at any yeah. point. <laughs> and it's all, it all everything in Austin is just white for some reason. Like all the it's all chalk. Everything's made of bright <laughs> material. So it's like <laughs> Can you get limestone? How dare you? Oh whatever, yeah. What, is, what color is that? It's like white. white. It's, yeah. white. Yeah. <laughs> it's white. It's lime. Can you get contacts that dim, that close down like a... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That sounds sunny. pretty cool, though. Because it would make your eyes go dark. It'd be wicked. Man. I'm trying to think. What would you rather have? Would you rather have automatic dimming or contacts that give you night vision? I'm, I... I'm going to expand here. Would you rather have contacts that give you night vision? Contacts that dim and make things where they're... You know, you can go out in the sun without having sunglasses. Yeah. Or would you rather have an uh, earpiece that does uh, universal translation? Can I throw in a fourth one? Go ahead. That I prefer more than any of these. Go ahead. I would like eyelids <laughs> that could <laughs> sort of armor over and not let any light through. Why? Because you have trouble sleeping? Yeah. So I can you sleep, sleep on a plane. In the day. He yeah. wears a mask on, a... on planes. Just, just get those masks. Well, yeah. I mean, just get contacts. I mean, just get just get glasses. I mean, you could, yeah. Hold on. What are you talking about? <laughs> no. I, so you can sleep in a bright room. Yeah, so I can you, sleep. So in you a get room. one of those sleep yeah. masks, right? But we're but talking about what would you rather have, in, like built in, like contacts or something. Would you have what? to like manually shut it? But like I you mean, close your eyes and then you got to like flip them down. I mean, out of all of those options that you had, the sleep mask was the easiest option. <laughs> yeah, really, you can <laughs> you already have get night that. vision. You could have. But here's I would the rather thing, have the right? universal translator. <laughs> no, right, You've already got a problem that someone's got a solution for. Well, night vision, you can just buy night vision goggles. Of course. Sure. What do you mean? Well, which, is, which is more expensive and more practical? Walk around with a military split yeah, or something. They're, easy, on? they're easy to get but, hold of. So what if an if a, if an eye mask is two quid or whatever? Go if on. I'm on a plane, and I forgot it. I I'm just awake for the whole flight. Right. Well, what, what do yeah. you want someone to say? I want to be able to go, and my eyes dark, go dark. Okay. Here's how I do it. Watch. Ready? Okay. No. Done. Bullshit. Over. You can still see stuff. Not a lot. How many fingers <laughs> am I holding up? <laughs> Not a lot. You can, so you see, can see anything. You can see some pink fuzz, probably. Some Dude, you, you, you need to get out of your own head. That that all that shit is there in my eyes, I just don't pay attention to it and I fall asleep. Yeah, what is this? <laughs> I mean, I'm staring right, right at the light with but, my eyes closed. But then look at this. Look at look right into the light. Look, look what? what? Yeah? And then, look, wait, are you gonna hit me? No, <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm gonna like do this and it's distracting when you try to sleep. How do you sleep? What? Do you sleep face up like this? On a plane? No, I go uh, in my, who, in my who the fuck is waving their hand in front of you on a plane? <laughs> I sleep like this on a plane. Does that work for you? How's that gonna work? Hey, do your balls come through your jeans? Oh my god. Do what you ever have that? Me? This is starting to happen to me. <laughs> like, I get like a hole. What's this hole? Yeah, no, what is that? That's the first bit to go on your jeans. It is. It just it's wears like, away. Look at that, Gav. Here, I can bend over and show it to you. Oh my god. <laughs> Take a look at that, Gav. It just, uh, I don't know what it is. Why is that? Is that a thing? Well, Broadcast crew, true, guys. I've, yeah, I've never had that happen. You're getting I've a thumbs it, up. I, from I, I, I don't know. It happens to me a lot. I don't know what you're talking about. Can you uh, explain to me? 
So I guess like this, where is... this sort of part where the yeah. seam the of gooch. your crotch is. Yeah, yeah. the gooch. You're, you're, For some reason, it just it, it's as if someone's been doing that. Your pants to it have problems ages. already. There you go. I mean, well, you know, on jeans, like on your jeans, do <laughs> go you ahead. have little? I go metal, this way. Do you, do you do you have little metal circles on some of the stitches? Like, look at your pockets and stuff. Yeah, yeah rivets. Yeah. yeah. Why isn't there one in the gooch hole? Because that would for, hurt. They're, they're for the straight, gooch right? Hole. What's well, every hole you're creating <laughs> with your bollocks? What the fucking <laughs> through? It's always on the side where I, I hang. I hang more on the right side. So why isn't there a little stability disc there? Yeah, what do they build like an area in for like one way or the other? I was like, I, you want left-handed or right-handed? I jeans? was, I was, <laughs> I was doing a job once, and and you know you have a big a whole wardrobe crew, and they're all dab hand at sewing and stuff like that. Yep. I took in about three or four pairs of jeans. <laughs> to sew up Just the said, crotch. Oh, can, you, can you sew these up for me? I love these jeans so much. And they're going. They're going, yeah, sure. I have a <laughs> shirt that I love that has, it's a little pearl snap shirt. And that part on the sleeve that's open, and it started to rip. And it's slowly, and I used to roll it up. And I'm not keeping up with it. Like, it's, it's now ripped all the way up to here. And I should just have somebody in the wardrobe department sew it up for me. But I feel Definitely. like it's rude to ask. You got away with it, though? It is rude to ask. Is I don't it? think so. Well, just go and you can just go no, and get I it done just, for and pay someone to yeah, do Yeah, but it. it's easier. It's more convenient. They're right here. Yeah, that was it. That was the that's, point. That's I just not said, their job for personal clothes fixes. No, but but it's their said, job. I really love this shirt, and you'd be really, you know, you'd be really helping me out if you could do this. What oh, monster just, wouldn't go, <laughs> well, I have point. the power to, <laughs> but, 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 but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the whole point. Like, no one's, no one's going to feel... Like they can say no, so you're basically forcing them to do something they probably don't really want to do. See, I felt that way when we recently had a steak cooking competition on the podcast. I won't go into who won it, but there's a trophy right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked uh, the the metalworking crew over in the art department, I asked them to sharpen my knives because I thought if they had sharper knives, it would make the steak seem more tender. Got to. And I felt bad about it, so I only brought in three knives. That's all I brought in. And they, they, he got them like razor sharp. And he said, Yeah, just bring the rest of your knives in. I'll sharpen them up. I'm like, I'll do that. Okay. So, it's Kit did it. It's, it's called nice. perks. It's just called perks <laughs> of like, of, of your job, of what, I just you feel know. Like it's just bothering someone. I was in a situation where, I, where yeah, I needed something and I was working with someone that could have helped me out. So I just took advantage. And of you them. would return the favor if somebody came to you and asked you if you had any skills that people could take advantage of? Yeah, they need some acting. <laughs> <laughs> if they need something said but better, you can give us yes. some acting. You see my socks? My wife found a website that makes socks where you can upload photos of your dogs. <laughs> oh, that's actually pretty well made. Yeah, <laughs> those are good. Those are good. I just kind of had it with dogs. Kind of uploaded. I, I have not had it with my dogs, so I, I, I like. Your, I like. You know what I like about your dogs? I don't see them. Like I've been out with you, and it's like you don't bring the dogs oh, along yeah, with no, you. They stay home. Yeah, I'm just. I, I go places now, and everybody's bringing their dogs everywhere. It's. I'm done with it. I don't. I don't want to see your dogs. Is you there know? anybody here in particular at Rich Teeth you're mad at? Nobody in particular, no. <laughs> but it's like I go to a restaurant and it's like, I, there's fucking dogs hanging out there, you know? And I got, I got to wear shoes and I got to wear pants. And the dog doesn't have to. He's, he's what like, what is it? Where like, are you on about dogs and pants? No, that was my ex-wife. I know. She was so on. <laughs> she thought all do all boy dogs should wear pants in public. Yeah. She was dead serious about it too. Yeah, it must be like someone bringing their kids to work every day. It's a little bit like that. Like tiny little kids though. And they think that you're super happy about it yeah. too. And it's like, I, occasionally- Except the kids stink and are <laughs> shitting everywhere. That's my kids. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like, there, occasionally somebody will bring their dog to work every now and then. I'm thinking about Otto in particular, Alan's dog, Otto. Oh, I love Otto. I get so excited every time I see Otto, because I don't see Otto every day. Yeah. You know? I don't see him every day. It's a treat. It's a treat. It's an event, you know? Why, Otto's why, awesome. why can't you bring cats to work? Exactly. Why can't you? We actually had a cat here, and he got thrown out. Cats don't smell. The cat was mm. pissing all over the lights. Oh, so. shush. Listen, that's, that was one time. One thing was Patrick. All over. No, all no, over. no. He's fine. It was way more than no, one Joe time. the cat was fine. Joe the cat pissed was fine. All over the lights. Oh, I, I was thinking about the other, like, <laughs> time before Patrick, it was even here when the cat was pissing in light bags and stuff. Yeah, and, I mean, it's, it's it was an ongoing thing. <laughs> Patrick was not, here at 636. <laughs> no, not at 636 in, in uh, Congress. Joe the oh. cat wasn't at Congress. Yeah. No, you're talking about. Uh, you the cat? Finch. Finch. We had Finch. At Finch was in, was in Buda. He was in both. Finch made the what? move. You had, a, you had a cat. No, you had Joe in Congress. We did have Joe the cat because he'd sit on the stairs and people would stop and say hello. I have, yeah, I have videos correct. of me petting Joe at Congress. That's true. Joe the cat was there. In fact, one of the he's sitting on the blue couch. The arm of the, that was his avatar for a long time. He's sitting on the arm of that blue Ikea couch that we had. Hmm. And remember, <laughs> the one with Joel, where you sit with Joel? I think I yeah. put that couch together. 
I remember that we I remember putting all those desks together, you know? <laughs> I love too. It's like at 15 years at this company. I love when I come across something and I'm like, that's where that ended up. Like I, I just saw something the other day that was it was something we had back in Congress, and it was like 10 years ago. And I said, I don't know what the path it took to get from there to here. I, I like somebody's can, office. Th there was jobs, like you, I was just assigned to do some like tiny little things back in the day. Like can you just sort this out because no one could be bothered to do it. Can one you go of look one of those dumpsters for an Xbox. Oh yeah, that was one of them. Go, go <laughs> see if it's on any of these streets and any of these alleys. One of them was, uh, we don't use it, but can you email YouTube from a Rooster Teeth email address and get the Rooster Teeth email, the Rooster Teeth YouTube account? Yeah, and I was like, yeah. I remember that. That was at the Butte apartment. Yeah, right? and I, yeah. I did it, and then they're like, here's the login information. I was just like. There you go. You were sitting at the uh, <laughs> the bar behind like the stove, yeah. right? You were sitting because up there. You, you put like glass ass and uh, lemon party and shit on my. Desktop. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> so yeah, wh while I was dodging terrible desktop backgrounds, there's Joe the cat. Absolutely, yeah. Joe the cat. That was not. A that's that's it. That looks yeah, like it's six three six. That's the annex, I think. Yeah, what a good cat. No uh, longer with us, unfortunately. It's too bad. Joe the cat has departed. That's sad. Yeah, very sad. Very sad. Something good guy, good guy though. Had him twelve years. People, good cat. people in chat were asking how old he was. Yeah, he was a good cat. I'm sad about that. I'm sad about it too. Ashley's very sad about it. I don't know what. I don't I'm know at the say. point where I, I was a. Uh, God damn man. I never. I grew up without pets. Um, dad was allergic to cats and that, so I didn't, I didn't get a pet until I was like 18. So all of the pets I've ever had are alive, which means I'm not ready. To deal with pet death, yeah, I've never dealt with really it. at thirty yeah. going on thirty. Excuse me. You're... Well, I mean, I'm you know thinking about you know I could get a pet. It's just it's not something I've dealt with before. No, no you're gonna, my mum so and dad thing. got a dog when I was seventeen. That was the first time we got a pet. Yeah, and it just died like a few weeks ago. Really? Yeah, and I just don't think I'm an animal person. Just didn't care because I called my mum for something else, <laughs> and I just said, "Oh, how's it going?" And she went, "Well, you know, you know, it's, you know, I'm, we're hanging in there," and I was like, "What are we?" What? What's happened? Yeah, you know, Roxy's died. I went, yeah, I know, yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah That's I, what I, called, I didn't know yeah. whether you, yeah, that, and I know. Coincidentally, made, where's that thing that I <laughs> I, I made the phone call into that. <laughs> <laughs> Just seeing how you're holding up. She was like, yeah, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna have a cremated and put her on the, th but I knew I'd been texted a couple of days before saying, you know, the time has come, we've had to put her down. Yeah. But I just was like, ah, oh, it's a shame. <laughs> so what else is going on? <laughs> Just moving on. So have you have you had a pet of your own die? No. You well, you I mean that pet was sort of mine. I mean, I, I was I was still at home when uh, when it was bought, and it was I walked it until I moved out when I was about twenty one, twenty two. Bloody hell! She's, you know they're just a pain in the ass, and they're great. You love them and whatever, but no one needs them. I don't think you love enough. I don't think you love small. Uh, I've like, got a dog. He's got yeah, kids. But, yeah, but, well, yeah, I have the kids. But I think if your dog died, you'd be like, oh. <laughs> it's, it's like the queen and dog. I'll tell you what, she's yeah. the, the dog I've got, she's a pain in the ass. She's a real, she's not clever. Well, a lot of dogs aren't. I got really upset when my dog, when I was a kid, died. Got hit by a car, so it was pretty traumatic. But when like, you were a, what? I got it. You right. just phrased it really weird. Did I? Because you said when you were a kid died. Oh, and my I dog when I was a kid. Said, my, when dog your when kid I was a my dog when I was died. a kid died. And uh, there's like, you can't hear all the hyphens in there that, <laughs> that connect all those thoughts. But uh, yeah, like, uh, you know, losing Joe the cat was really bad, but it's like, he's 12. We got a lot of fun years together. And yeah, my, my mom and dad's dog was hanging on. Yeah. It was like, it, it needs to go now. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's sad. I miss Joe the cat. She, was, all, the she cat. was bleeding through the, her nose and stuff. And the, yeah. One of my favorite RTAAs in recent memory <laughs> is uh, when they animated Chris Maris talking about his mother's dog. <laughs> the melting dog. It was like, my mom's dog is dead. <laughs> okay, she's not dead, but uh, it's just really sick. <laughs> uh, Chris Maris has a, a very a, special brain. I That's think a great I saw that on a uh, animated. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, no, my friend had a dog that was. Deaf and blind, and also just kept having epileptic fits. Mm. That's just the point where it's like, what? What is the quality of life? Do, like, does the life register as anything at this point? But we we used to make jokes about this dog all the time. <laughs> and then the animals. one day where he did say, "Oh, you know, the dog's gone," because of all the years of sort of in jokes that we've been making about this dog, we just burst out laughing. <laughs> 
Like the dog we had like, the ultimate punchline. We were like in hysterics. It's like, yeah, it's dead. And we just all started falling about laughing. Yeah. That's a oh, living that's, thing. It's horrible. I know. <laughs> I need to we have a circle things. of life thing going on at our house now where uh, right outside of our back door, there's this old planter, and we were it was, everything in there had died over the winter because we got some severe frost this winter. And we were about to replant everything, and we noticed that there's a bird's nest in there with five eggs. Make an omelet? No, <laughs> how dare you? How dare you? So this little bird, I don't even know what kind of bird it is. It's a tiny little bird. So I've actually repurposed one of the security cameras that was inside the house and took it outside, set up on a tripod from my fucking VR setup, Gus. And <laughs> I now have it, like, so I can get alerts VR. whenever like the bird... an American Bill Oddy. What's that? <laughs> yes, I'm like, I'm sitting there looking at these at these bird eggs all the time and cheering for the bird. Oh, do you babies. have the live feed now? I want to see these eggs. I'll show you. Want to see these eggs? Yeah. Autumn watch. I can't. I'm not going to show you the app I use or anything like that. Speckled sparrow. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I can show. I can show it to you. I'll show it to you between the uh, show and the post show. Sure. Have All you right. seen eggs hatch then? Uh, I feel, yeah, I feel like I've seen that before. Yeah. No, I mean uh, this specific. No, it's still like it does. It's a cute bird. Like, okay. It does nuzzling like. Uh, do, you, do you know thing? how long it's going to take? Well, you, you, I don't know. Also, I, you're going to have to watch that bit where the weak one turns up and you just go, oh, "It's not going to be there know, tomorrow." I, yeah. Did you see the uh or some lizard comes and eats them all one day? Oh God, what the hell? Was it Planet Earth or something or one of the blue planets where there was there was loads of eggs, loads of birds nesting these eggs? Definitely not Blue Planet. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. does, that doesn't just ring a bell. But then these other birds would just deliberately hang out in the area. Yeah, they'd yeah. eat them. They'd eat the eggs and then lay their eggs. Yeah, well, well yeah, they would just like peck them up and when the, all the eggs would be smashed and dripped out. And the the parent birds. Would just I, come back and I, just sit I on the I literally watched this last night. I think night. it was Planet Earth. Planet no, it's Earth. Blue Planet. It's a new Blue Planet. Oh, it just yeah. came out. Planet. The new one that just came and out. That's yeah, about the sits. sea. <laughs> no, it's not. Blue Planet, yeah, it's about... It's what, about what do you think our planet is? With a flamingo. What colors our oh, planet no, from? Of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it should be called Blue and Green Planet. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly these were seabirds. But anyway, right. yeah. The, the mother bird comes and sits in the kid goop. Yeah. And just... Nests on it and like keeps it warm thinking it's still about I think but that's blue planet season two episode two Sounds about right. I li I'm telling you I literally <laughs> watched this thing you're talking ocean. about I watched it last night It's in the same episode with the fucking lizard running from the snakes. Yeah, which is amazing. Have you seen that before? Yeah, yeah it's amazing. That's it amazing so good. The fact yeah. that they can cut that into a coherent story Unbelievable. Oh, I've never you know, cheered like for something so much clips. in my life. Are we gonna get clips. are we gonna get another one of them? With that Amber. He reckons he's got another one in him. I mean he doesn't have to go there anymore. He well, just four oceans how many have they covered so far? <laughs> <laughs> is it four oceans or just one ocean? The seven seas. But it's, well, like, the, it's one body no, of water. Yeah, there's no ocean we, where the water doesn't get out. Like, where's the border between the Pacific Ocean and the Indian Ocean? You just, you just, eventually you're in one. And not the other. What, is, that the, is that the lizard running? I have no idea what's going on over there. I'm hearing, I'm hearing action God, music. David Enberg's 91. He's got yeah, another I know, series. Yeah. Like, could a country just say, hey, we're making an ocean in our body of water? Like Japan says, okay, the Pacific ends halfway now, and then the left side of the Pacific is now the Japanese Ocean. What is what makes it an ocean? The depth? I don't know. Or the the area? It's all the one vastness. connected body of water. It's one ocean. Right. I might just go out and claim it. Well, that's like actually that's like saying you can't claim an ocean. I, why not? That's like saying Europe. Yeah. Wait, is a continent? No, no. Yeah. It's almost like saying that. <laughs> no, it's almost like saying Europe is a continent. But it's just like saying that it's all this it's all connected. It is. Yeah. But yeah, but no one refers to it as like land. You Listen, know, all this is the a problem we all have it's with you guys in Europe. Countries. It's part of Asia, and no one wants to fucking talk about it. There's no difference between Europe and Asia. You guys drew a boundary and yeah. called it a continent. There's no body of water between you and also, Asia. Also, if you go <laughs> if you go like West Asia. If you go to those sort of Middle Eastern countries and stuff like that, they don't even recognize the boundaries that Westerners have True. put yeah, on this. that's the different. But also, every country is the same as your stupid ocean comment. I think technology has forced a little bit of that, like I calendars think, and number systems. I think it might just be a case so that people know where they are. If they're sailing or something, I don't know. People know where they are? Yeah, they just go, oh, what sea am I in? I mean that one, all right. That way's home. I don't think you could be confused about which ocean you set sail in. You don't know how lost you can get. <laughs> you might just get very, no, very lost. There's not two Americas, right? It's At what continent. point do you transition an ocean by boat? Yeah. You Where's the to, border? You go across an ocean to more land, and then you go across land and go in a different what? ocean. You don't drive hmm. from one ocean to another ocean. What does it look like? Maybe you don't. At the Strait of Magellan, at the 
very tip of South America where the Pacific and Atlantic big dotted line meet. Like what 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 is that there? Like, <laughs> it's like you're right. Where is the delineation? <laughs> is there a part in the ocean where it's like, oh look, it's different here? There's no, there's, spray paint there's, the there's, um, there's sort of security to stop any sort of immigrant war. There coming. you go, exactly. It's a seawall <laughs> protect immigrants, fish, yeah. <laughs> the black <blood, laughs> the what migrating is. fish. <laughs> well, you're an illegal migrating fish. <laughs> God, it's one of the things I don't understand about the conversation we have now is. What, what what is the concept of illegal immigration? It like it, it's like at some point, immigration was like people came to this country to come here and live and work and create this country. But at some point, somebody would go, eh, and now enough. it's not. Yeah. You, you got to do it legally. What like, if the first person that got here just did a one eighty and blocked everyone else from getting off the boat? It was like, no, 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 no. no. Hey, look, do you have your papers? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, yeah, get out of here. This is my, why, are you I, come, why are you coming here? Yeah, I was here first. Yeah, I live here. That'd be great. That's, <laughs> who knew that's what all the Native Americans needed to do? It was like, just, that, just ask for the paperwork. Up. Yeah. Where's, where's your papers? papers? Huh? Good just put up really dingy booths with like Windows 95 on and be like, nah, <laughs> no, you can't do it. Sure. This Fuck stamp's off. not going in your passport. Oh, here's the lizard. You can't show this. Okay. It's copyrighted. Uh, well, we were commenting on it, so it's fair use. Okay, so these are baby <laughs> sea iguanas. You should watch this on uh, BBC's Blue Planet da, 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 Season da, da, 2, da, da, Episode da, da, 2. And they have to, after they hatch, under the sand, they have to make it to the ocean, and they have to get through these fucking snakes. How is this camera not pissing off these animals? It's like a moving tracking shot. I don't know. I don't know. Look at that guy go. 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 Is it a drone? Oh. Nah, this one gets free, though. No, oh, what? You ruin it. I feel like- Why'd you ruin it? I feel like watching it. almost everything on those, you know, the Attenborough yeah. sort of stuff is just, look at this baby. How it needs to get through thousands of things that are gonna kill it. Right. There, there are hundreds of teeth between yeah. it and being alive. It's always the classic of that. Uh, well, it the, makes sense. The turtle, the, the turtle that's just hatched mm -hmm. and managed to get out from well, the you, sand. But that's just. N and then there's birds and lizards right. and everything just swimming. I oh, know. Imagine that being the beginning of your life. You'd be going, fuck it, no, I'm stressed <laughs> out beyond belief. This is too much. One of the saddest things I've ever seen. There was, this, it was a. A shot of like something, some kind of gazelle, or I don't know, it was might old, be a springbok. What some, some some kind of one of these deer that's not a deer. Do have a horn? Is it African? Yeah, yeah. It's got ibex, maybe ibex. Maybe. What's it called? Called ibex. Might it's be. giving birth, and it's looking around while it's giving birth, and then all of a sudden it, it like stands up and darts away, and the baby just like falls out, and then a cheetah just comes up and goes crunch on the baby. It's like that thing was around for five fucking seconds. <laughs> that was on planet Earth. I don't know what it was on. It was on one of these horrible documentary shows. About I've, nature. I've seen clips that makes you realize they must cut a lot from Planet Earth because it's like, it's, you know, it's like kids watch it. Yeah. Ad Adam Bristol, like, oh, look at the way this happens in the. American. Oh, look but, at this. <laughs> <laughs> but there's clips of like lions and stuff swiping at deer mm. and all of their intestines yeah. like, spill out while they're running away. It's like, they wouldn't put that in Planet Earth. Or they're still alive while they're being eaten. Yeah. Like, it's always the thing where they, they take them down, they're dead, and then they'll show all the animals eating them. But there's a lot of times where they just, they kind of cripple them and then just start eating them. Like, yeah. from the bottom up. But they're like, yeah, they don't care. Yeah. And really fresh. It, yeah. It makes me think of that old video. Remember, what was it? The the battle at, I looked it up, battle at Kruger. It was like that three-way fight. Yeah, it was the crocodiles the fighting, the lions <laughs> fighting, the... Um, like the the water buffalo. That was it. Yeah, it's like a big three way fight between animals. I think I feel like I have. Yeah, it's, it's like a thing it's, it's like a footage. Yeah, they like yeah. chase this thing and they splash it into the water and then they're trying to eat it and then the crocodile comes up out of the water. So they're fighting over it, mental. And then all the parents come back and kick them. <laughs> right. It's like I, being an animal is must be so tired. Yeah. <laughs> like you're you're always trying to either eat or not be eaten. Not the, if you're the, my dog. <laughs> 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 yeah, the best thing the human <laughs> race figured easy. out. You what? His dogs, pets have it easy. They're like the royal yeah. family of the animal world, oh, basically. Yeah. I, I got I it like easy. They won the lottery. They did. There was a time, animals evolving and all that stuff, everything's fighting, eating. There was a time where the first animal was able to go, ah, oh, just have a rest. Yeah. And that was the most successful animal. Do you know, I think- didn't have to worry. And that animal was a human. It was us. I think I have future resentment of my dog. Yeah. Of a situation that hasn't even come up yet. Because I know for a fact, if the dog, which is a dog, by the way, a dog, if someone goes, oh, <laughs> we, you, if the dog's not well, it needs £20,000, my wife's going to look at me and I'm going to go, yes, all right then. Wow, yeah, that's that's the chunk of change. Hate it. I know that that's going to happen. I, I can feel it. And, it's and a dog. At that point, you'd be I'd love, looking. I would go to her and go, we can get another one. For like, for you like get 200 pounds. <laughs> yeah. You, you should look at the dog after that point. 
clean, you know, it's been fixed. I'll be looking great. at the dog and, and then, I'll be going, I want a bit more out of you, to be honest. And then look at a bit a gap where a bit a TV isn't like a big, nice twenty thousand dollars. I'll tell you TV. what, that dog has made so many gaps in my house. <laughs> Destroying furniture. I was telling you about yeah, it. Yeah, you had like it. a nice I got antique. An, I got antique uh, it know, would be though a good story. I got you say, how did your dog die? And you say, well, Samsung put out a new TV that year. <laughs> so the dog just died. <laughs> what a weird coincidence. As, as, a, as a result of Samsung putting out a new TV. 8K resolution became yeah. a thing. Who could predict that? That that would kill my dog when I got it 12 years ago. All right. Well, let's uh, let's wrap this up. Let's wrap it up. So we uh, have Kofi James more barbecue. We do. Uh, I want to thank everyone for watching. If you're watching <laughs> live right now, uh, there's going to be a little bit of a bonus post show segment. Uh, we had a chance to talk to Broken Lizard uh, about Super Troopers 2, and we're going to air that immediately uh, after this. If you're watching, why don't you make it the post show? And then we can cut out early. All right, go ahead. But you're, I want everyone, show. everyone to see it. So wait, we still doing we'll a post show? A, oh, then okay. we'll do a separate post show for our first a members who we love show. very much. So uh, regular old boring post over yeah. here. Thanks everyone for watching. We will see you guys next time. Thanks for bye. Hey everyone, yeah. welcome to this supplemental portion of the Rooster Teeth podcast. I'm Gus, and joining me is Jack, and we've got a uh, broken lizard with us here. Hello, Look at all these hey, people everyone. here. A lot Hello. of people on your set. A lot you of guys. people. Uh, I know. We're uh, we're we're pushing the limits of technology here I with guess the, no so. the number of people <laughs> per camera. Have you ever had this much beef in one uh, <laughs> podcast? <laughs> this is uh, it's pretty beefy. I'm not. I don't think. I think we're approaching a uh, world record. Maximum beef. beef. Uh, Max beef. <laughs> so uh, we met you guys. We talked briefly. Uh, I think about three years ago at the YouTube space. We were talking yeah, about that. Yeah. Uh, I think you had just started the crowdfunding for Super Troopers Two at the time. And uh, no, you, you may have just actually wrapped it up at that point. Yeah. And uh, now here you are. Uh, finally, the we made the movie. coming out. <laughs> and uh, you guys, uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure everyone, as soon as you walked in the door, everyone's told you, you guys took our record from Indiegogo for the most funded film ever. <laughs> So <laughs> congratulations. Oh, that was that. your record. We broke your record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry, guys. We, we, so sorry. now, whenever I explain to people, yeah, we did a crowdfunding film. You know, you know, Super Troopers 2 was like that. Yeah, just not, not, <laughs> as, not as successful or not as well known. Yeah, yeah. we had like the, the, a smaller one. So congrats. I mean, it's how been, much? How much did you guys make? Uh, I think about 2.4 million. That's still good. Yeah. Oh, it's still really good. I mean, it's not it's, four and a half. But. No, super no. respectable no. though. Super it's no respectful. broken lizard money. But now that should inspire you to go out and do it again and rate and try to beat that mark. Try to beat it. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll beat that mark. Yeah, and the next one, yeah, never ending. Yeah. So, um, I mean, what what was it like? It seems like there was such uh, a, a big break, you know, between the first film and the second film. Was it hard for you guys to get like back into it and uh, get back into character? It was just a matter of growing mustaches. You know, Is I mean? that it? <laughs> Once you grow a mustache and, and get the haircut and put a piece of gum in your mouth, yeah, boom, you, Farva, then you're in good shape. Farva. If you want to, you can augment that with some uh, forearm exercises to get your <laughs> your cop forearms going. <laughs> but that's really uh, the process. We also, you know, we made sure these must these mustaches are twice the size of the first film because you know it's a sequel. So, <laughs> especially Kevin's. If, if you've seen the first Super Troopers, you know that uh, like that character had a really shitty mustache, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that was. Not by design. That was just what he was that's capable what I, or incapable that's of That's what doing. God gave me, sir. Yeah, 12 hair holes that's in his right. upper lip. 12 hair holes. But now, I mean, yeah, look at that had, thing. Twice He's, as many hair holes. Well, well, should we get a shot of it? Well, 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 now technology's there in... There, in, go. there we go. Look at that. That's a good mustache. mustache. Like good look looking mustache. Yeah. Like camera technology is, has really... <laughs> taken off in the intervening years, so you got to really fulfill like for every frame. Yeah, you gotta HD. Have a, it's that HD of stuff, man. They get right in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, but uh, I mean the I, I was such a fan. I'm such a fan of the first film. The, you know the, the the work you guys have made. So I'm I'm super excited. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to to make it to the, uh, the oh, premiere last night. You're gonna see it. But I saw on the you know on the Austin subreddit. People were posting about it, you know, photos of you guys on stage, and it seemed like the reaction was universally positive. And I feel like the Austin subreddit's normally very hostile and toxic. Oh, really? okay. and I was like, no one is saying anything <laughs> bad right now. Like this wow, must be just absolutely wait. amazing. Uh, it turned out, it turned out okay. I mean, we had, you know, we we've been working on the idea since 2008, and uh, so we did like 35 drafts of the script. And wow. The nice thing though is like, if it, it is is that it is being well received. Like if we had spent all that time. Putting this thing together and then it wasn't well it received. Would be miserable. It would be yeah. a much worse it experience. Be yeah, <laughs> it'd be if, losers. If the Austin subreddit had turned on us, it would have broken our hearts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we didn't, never knew to check it. Yeah. Well, we would have known. No. Never heard of it. We would have found out. Yeah. Yeah, I got to see it last night. I went out and watched it last night. It was actually really, oh, good. really good. I enjoyed thank it you. quite thank a bit. You. I was in that crowd and they were they were eating. That was that a rowdy there. crowd. It was. They man. loved it. Rabbit, yeah. Some yellow pharma call outs too. So that's always good. We always know that if our 
if the film plays in Austin, that, w- that then we know that it's it's we've done a good job. Yeah. This I, is the this is the as, best film crowd in in the country. Because as goes Austin, so goes. <laughs> so the I mean, because is that they're the expression. They're, yeah, yeah, they're educated mm-hmm. and they're, you know they're sometimes high. Right. <laughs> so, that's our crowd. Speaking of, speaking of which, I'm glad that you all are are doing something to try to get stoners out of their house on, I know. Uh, on April 20th. You can never count on them, though. Yeah, you, they, they might get the date wrong. <laughs> you don't forget. Know. But you no, I mean, look, that that, that that was, I think, you know, the the that was the, I think the conundrum with the studio. I think the studio of Fox was like, no, no, we we know like people love the first movie. We know there's an audience, but. 90% of them didn't see the first movie in the theater. They saw it on DVD or whatever. And, you know, they were probably mostly all stoned. And so how do we then get those people to go to the theater to consume the movie in a different way than they consumed the first one? And that is what led to the 420 release date. Mm-hmm. So we'll see if that strategy I, yeah, works. I, I felt like the first film was the kind of film that really grew by word of mouth. Like, um, yeah. uh, I, I know I, I'm one of those people yeah. who saw it on DVD yeah. and it was, it was one of those things where it's like, man, how did I miss this film in the theater? Like, why didn't I have that experience? But I feel like now it's been passed around so much. People are so familiar with the, that story and that film. It's like, now you've got it. Now everyone's been educated, you know, they've learned about it. So hopefully that's the push to get them into the that theater. That gets them off the couch. Right. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, that. I hope. <laughs> well, well, I'll go watch that. Um, now, yeah. where did the where did the uh, sort of idea of the whole Canada versus U.S. kind of stuff come from? Like, where where, where did that of the thirty five scripts? When did that kind of become the the key moment of it? I mean, I, th- there was a real life uh, reassessment of the border uh, after nine eleven, and so they were they were trying to make sure that they knew exactly where the border. Where they reassessed it, and there were sections of the border that were in the wrong place, hmm. and so we thought, oh, let's make it a bigger section. And uh, so now a section of Canada is actually being turned over to the United States and we're the police force that's sent there to oversee the turnover. Nice, that's great. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny. I mean, like one uh, Bruce McCullough makes a little appearance in this thing mm-hmm. and I love Kids in the Hall, sure, so. Sure. We do too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how'd you get him involved with it? Uh, you know, I, we I, wanted somebody who was, you know, uh, emblematic of Canada. You know, inviting us into the to country. To greet us, yeah, as we and, uh, symbolic, and so, you know, right? we went, you know, to the kids in the hall, which, you know, and nice. we had a connection to the same representation or whatever, and was, hey, can Bruce come and do this? And he's like, yeah, I'd love to. Cool. You think it's going to be like a Civil War thing, maybe Super Troopers 3 will be kids in the hall versus I know. you guys? Have a brawl, a crossover. I would love that. <laughs> Man, um, that'd be so- great. Were you all nervous at all? Like I'm, I, keep, I keep thinking about the crowdfunding. Were you all nervous at all that someone was going to take you up on your indecent proposal <laughs> uh, perk, sure. which was never actually yeah. claimed? I think we wanted that to happen. I mean, we could have used that twenty-five million dollars. <laughs> so it was twenty-five million <laughs> bucks. Movie, if you yeah. donate twenty-five million bucks, uh, one of us will sire a child for you. <laughs> That's what the Indiegogo thing. But it was going to be grab it. bag, right? It was right. going to be yeah, you know, yeah. like you don't know which. Like you, you just get a, dad you is. get a turkey right. baster in the mail. Right. And if the baby comes out fat, then if right. the baby comes out brown, then, then it's short. <laughs> you know. Maybe maybe you shake really, yeah. shake up the bag and it comes out fat, short, <laughs> and brown. <laughs> this is all the best qualities. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, you all had some really good, some really great backing. It seemed like, like I saw, there was a you know the thirty five thousand uh, dollar backer. There was like I think a twelve thousand five hundred. Yeah, a ten thousand dollars. The guy bought the car like a, car like within sold. the first yeah. day. Somebody yeah. bought the squad car for thirty five thousand yeah, bucks. Yeah, pretty like f- first few hours. Yeah, which we were surprised about. I mean, that was the thing. You guys have done a, a crowdfunding campaign. Just how much pe- people showed up and did buy those mm-hmm. prizes immediately and. Having never done something like that, we were so amazed by that. Like, oh my God, the car just went. <laughs> were you at all nervous, like trying to fulfill these expectations? Because then, like, when you do this crowdfunding thing, not only do you have to make a film for it, then you have to like manage all these expectations that go along with we have uh, some, the donations. Yeah, we have crowdfunding managers who are dealing with mm. all fifty plus thousand of those people, and you know, naturally, <laughs> we've taken a little longer to make the film than planned, or to have it come out than planned. So, you know, they have to they have to, have to sort of. Uh, ride that huge People want their wave. posters. Uh, people want their damn posters. Want their they stuff. Want their and I get it. Down. I get it. Imagine ordering something At three years, like, three years three to get. Years, yeah. Yeah. But we kept telling people, it's like, we can't send you the poster until we make the poster. Right. right? I mean, we Fox, can't make the poster until the yeah. movie's done. Fox is making the poster. So. Right. So now they're all going to get the posters. Yeah. You'll get there, uh, but you, in the end, it seems like at least you fulfilled everything. I know we've all we we bitch all the time on our podcast about crowdfunding stuff that we back that they just go bankrupt, and it's yeah. like oh no, you don't get anything. Yeah. So in the end, as long as you get something, yeah. like I think one of our guys bought a cup, 
<laughs> and that was it. It was like a cup that told you when to drink water, and okay. like the company went out of business. Like they, they took like a hundred bucks from him. <laughs> and, <laughs> so as long as people, that. Yeah. as what long as people get like their posters, stick yeah. your yeah. and they'll see the movie. Yeah. 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 The movie exists. You've seen it, I've right? Seen it. You've I seen it, it exists. You'll yeah. see it. Right. I've seen it on screen. But That's there right. are a lot of posters to that need to get signed, and yeah. we have this we have this realization now. Seven thousand posters were delivered to Heffernan's house. Yeah, and we're like, okay, well. I guess we'll carve out an entire week and do nothing <laughs> with signed posters. Like, I don't know how you sign 7,000 yeah. posters. It's, it's, it took up the space of a car. There's, they, they delivered 7,000 posters to my house. Oh, my and, God. And like we're going we're gonna to sign them all, guys. Like are these full-size movie posters? Yeah, or are these yeah, like yeah. The, yeah. The, quarter the big ones. Like, oh, the full-size no. ones, yeah. Oh, that's Be a good. So if you, you could sign like 1,000 a day for a full week? Yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta find that time. That's, that's a lot of signing. I know. That's a lot of posters. <laughs> you're, you're never gonna sign. Want to sign your name again after? I know. That. Oh I guess things could be worse though, right? Things yeah, could be worse. but I sure. mean, we could have been bankrupt. That, yeah. Without that, we wouldn't have a movie. Oh no, no. I'm just. It's it's no, getting I'm, my head around. Like it's crazy, but. Wow. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of support, right? I mean, that's 7,000 people who absolutely back yeah. to the that's creation of the film yeah. and who that's are a fantastic the problem to have. It's a great, it's a success great problem. problem. Yeah. That's a success problem. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's, I mean, what's it been like, I guess, like when the first film came out to watch that that rise, you know, to see, like, watch people start picking it up on DVD yeah. and then watch, like, the, the film enter, like, it's, it's, it's entered, like, this meme state. On the internet, where you know um, that mother of God, yeah. you know, image is like I see that on Reddit or I see it on the internet all the time. Like it's reached that point where it's just like this cultural currency. Yeah, mother you know, of God. What's it's it like amazing. to watch it go from just something you made to like this where it's everywhere? Well, it was, it was a very slow burn though. So like when the first when the movie came out, uh, you know, a certain amount of people went saw in the theater, but it wasn't a huge blockbuster or anything. So it was really it took a couple of years. For even to people start watching the DVD, and then you start, tri you know, you get recognized here and there or whatever, and then it just kind of took off, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think it was like three or four years later, walking down the street and like in a passing car, somebody's like, "You boys like Mexico?" And you're like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it's it's it becomes surreal. Like when we walk around together, people tend to recognize us much more easily, and, and that's what happened. We were in New York City, somebody came running out of a bar, and they're like, are you guys the super troopers? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm the bartender, come, you're drinking for free. And that just kind of started to happen, and it's, uh, you know, we didn't intend for that to happen, we just wanted to make the best movie we could, and, and hopefully it would be on one screen someplace, and uh, yeah, it's kind of grown. Now it creates this pressure, though, that you, you know, we don't want to mess it up, you know what I mean? Mm. The, well, that's why we movie. write 35 drafts of every movie we make, because <laughs> yeah. we're trying to pour over every artistic detail, every second, every joke. Yeah. And we want yeah, it yeah. to be good. Well, I read, I read in your book, actually, I like your, your writing style, where you just write the jokes, and then you cast after everything's done. That's a really interesting way of well, doing humanly, it. Humanly, you would once you know you're playing a part, you're going to be like, oh, I have an idea for my character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's not how this yeah. group really works well. It works if we're all writing the best joke for all the characters, because you might play one. So that's why you... You don't cast it until like draft fifteen. Right? Well, did, the, did it, things change for Super Troopers too? Because you you clearly have your characters. Yeah. You just have to yeah. be disciplined and to be a good good person and write <laughs> jokes for other people. Right, but also when you know all those characters, like you sit down and write Super Troopers too, and I know Rabbit, I know what Rabbit would say. So I, I, I think we didn't fall into that trap necessarily because it was awesome to be like, oh yeah, yeah, and this is what Mac would come in and do this, and oh yeah, this is where Farva would do that. So. Uh, it just it was a very sort of fluid, easy kind of process to jump into that, yeah. And I think that's also, you know, the philosophy is the whole movie has to be great. So, you know, like, you know, we've got a scene in the movie that's uh, the Canadian, the Mounties are, you know, watching TV and, you know, it's a behind the curtain look at what their lives are like. And it's it might be the best scene in the movie. <laughs> and, uh, you know, somebody asked me, like, does it bother you that that scene in the movie is not you guys? And... The answer is no, I mean, because the, the idea is to make the best movie possible, yeah, so yeah. every scene should be hysterical. Yeah, it's still y'all's name on the on the poster. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. we had a hand in writing those jokes. Absolutely. <laughs> now, so what, what's the idea? It seems like with all the Broken Lizard movies now, I've seen almost all of y'all's dicks. So <laughs> I, is there is there like a list where you have to go down? Like you have to, I don't know I don't know if I've seen your dick yet, but I think I've seen everybody We can else. take care of that right now. Early. Solansky? Take <laughs> your pants off, Solansky. Show your dick. Uh, pretty Show close, though. Uh, Kevin's wife said, well, I've never seen so much flesh on you, Solansky. I have a lot of flesh in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but not total. No spoilers or anything. Yeah, like sure. ninety-eight percent flesh. <laughs> there you go. So just sure. not your dick. Just not my yeah, yeah. my Johnson. <laughs> Lemmy, you know, in this on the other Lemmy hand, on the other hand, in yeah. this movie, and Johnson's uh, doing acrobat. I'm totally naked. Yeah, I mean, you see me three hundred sixty degrees. <laughs> nice. 
<laughs> naked. <laughs> Every nook and cranny. Yeah. Everything. The everything. Full, the full-on requiem. Yeah. But you green. got ready for it. I mean, you did dick exercises, right? And mm-hmm. got it all toned up and everything, right? Yeah, yeah. We uh, lost some weight you, on my you dick. You dehydrate for a day before the <laughs> yeah. shot. That way, like, yeah. you're Maybe. really you ripped. Lose too much weight, though, because you don't want to lose any dick weight. <laughs> no, but like you don't want it to, you don't have fat dick either. Like, <laughs> it's a fine line. It's a right? fine it's line. It's really, really it's. Uh, I had this conversation with Daniel Day Lewis about the uh, you know, how to <laughs> lose weight on your dick, dick just right. Yeah. yeah. When Super Troopers Two is shown in 3D, will your Johnson come flying out into the audience? <laughs> Uh, uh, hey, uh, uh, hey, oh my gosh. Sure, like the the 4D, yeah, uh-huh. with the vibrating seats and the, the wind that blows on you, flying dicks. Yeah. No, I caught a uh, I caught a reference to uh, Club Dread actually in the movie. So there's a, a, nice. ring, a ringtone that you catch. Yeah. Yes. Um, I love that movie. But uh, is Thank there you. anything else that fans should like kind of listen out for, or keep an eye on for maybe other references like Slam and Salmon or Puddle Cruiser? There's a uh, 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 like uh, one of those sort of like hidden gems on on the post on one of the posters. Oh, okay. There's like a sneaky little broken lizard uh, hidden mm-hmm. item. Strange. But we had a couple good little ones, like for Brian Cox too. I think we did. A, we do a we had a Braveheart, Braveheart reference uh, in there also. <laughs> I mean, in the same scene in the same scene. I think as, oh, the, wow. as Club Dread. Yeah, as it ma- mentioned. We also thought it had been funny for the sequel if uh, instead of Brian Cox playing Chief O'Hagan, it was uh, Anthony, Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins, right? <laughs> <laughs> See if anybody would have gotten that one. <laughs> sure. <laughs> because uh, he was the original Hannibal Don't Lecter, Brian Cox. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad Brian Cox is back in the film. I thought he's he was great. Awesome. We are, he's he's awesome. aged a day either. He looks yeah. great. Yeah. He looks yeah. fantastic. I think he has, a, he has a much more prominent presence in this one than he did in the first one. Too. He has a lot of good comedy and a lot of moments that I really love in this one. Yeah, he, seems to be, he seems to be more of a part of the group this time. Like yeah. Last time yeah. he was kind of the straight man to you guys. Because yeah. we didn't know him back then. <laughs> now, we, now we know. Yeah, they can make the ask. But to his chagrin, though, I think he's had enough of us <laughs> <laughs> and you know at, at around five o'clock every day he would start to get a little bit cranky and uh, he usually took it out on jay he did <laughs> nice so 15 years from now you'll ask him to be in the third one and then yeah. have him come back yeah he's he's polite he suggested plot lines for himself for super troopers 3 which involve him being dead a lot yeah, of down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lot of opens on my funeral <laughs> yeah it's like uh like alec guinness <laughs> trying to get out of star wars yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe you should kill this ben kenobi character it opens on my gravestone Right. Well, is he really? He he says he doesn't shoot night shoots anymore. That that he made an exception for us, but but just generally speaking, he he says no to anything that involves night shoots. And so you know, it, it, I don't know in the future how that you know. How <laughs> well, we discussed it at length. He goes, well, well, we you shoot a plate, and I'll come onto a stage. You put me in front of blue screen, and then you'll you'll comp in the night. <laughs> but we well, talked about. Making him a vampire, and then he only shoots at night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he only shoots. I want to get to that point. I want, I want that kind of rider. Like, I'm not shooting a vampire. Night. But there was there was also a riff where we could just shoot in front of a green screen, and then he would be a ghost. So that was <laughs> we started going in that that direction for the third one. It's like okay, opens on his funeral, and then he's just like a friendly ghost who, <laughs> who follows us around. And we that we do we do his stuff on green screen during yeah, the day. We so. shoot him out like in two days on the green screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole Boom. film's done. But oh, I even think we. Far, far. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't. We were gonna have him be even an invisible ghost, like uh, with, <laughs> right. like you see a coffee mug float by. <laughs> the he just go do vo. Yeah. For, for we had a, a long conversation about this. Yeah. yeah. His we, other pitch to us was was him and Linda Carter in a ski chalet someplace. Right. Right. <laughs> They've they're together now. And you gone you off. figure out the rest. Just put me in a ski chalet with Linda Carter. For <laughs> she hours. had a much bigger role in this movie too. Yeah. So, yeah, like she, she had a kind of a smaller part in the first one, but this one she was like a full blown, you know, in she's quite, quite a full on Basil exposition. Yeah, yeah. she was the exposition. We, realize we bring deliver. her in to do all the heavy lifting that, that none of yeah. us wants to do, <laughs> explaining the Canada situation. All right, well, uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. The film comes out April twentieth. Yep. April twentieth. Four twenty. I think uh, everyone should go watch it in the theater. Oh, there yeah. it is. Super there Troopers is. 2, opening April 20th. Thanks so much for taking time to Thank come you. and chat with me. It's a pleasure. Looking forward to it. I like your diamond ring, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> it's my road rage ring. It's when I flip people off, okay. then they see it. Like, they know. Oh, <laughs> good call. Joke. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.